On day one, I spawned into the deep dark forest as a skeleton dragon, one of the coolest and spookiest kinds of dragons there is. Well, I guess I'm more of a baby skeleton dragon. I must have just come out of the skeleton altar. That's gotta be why I only have three hearts. And what's this in my inventory? A void worm eye? What would I use that for? That's when I saw a skeleton horse riding out of the trees towards me. For some reason, she looked worried. What are you doing here, baby skeleton dragon? I just got here. My name's Zozo. What's going on? It's dangerous to be in this forest at night. We need to get out of here. Before I could ask any more questions, I saw shadows in the dark between the trees. And suddenly, I felt uneasy. Zozo, we have to leave. Now! Mr. Dark is here! Mr. Dark? Who's Mr. A tall, shadowy figure appeared in the trees behind us. At first, all I could see was his glowing purple eyes. No need to run away. Why don't you come with me, little ones? I'll take you to Playland. We'll have toys and games and candy. I just know you're going to love it. I knew in my dragon bones I couldn't trust this man. He creeped me out just standing near him. So me and the skeleton horse ran away as fast as we could. You can run, little ones, but I'll take you all to Playland soon. We took refuge in a nearby cave to wait out the rest of the night, worried Mr. Dark might find us at any moment. What's your name, skeleton horse? Sally. I'm Sally the Skeleton Horse. Thanks for the save, Sally. On day two, Sally the Skeleton Horse and I emerged from the cave with the sun shining high up above. We're safer during the daytime. I've only ever seen Mr. Dark under the moonlight. We decided, with a little less pressure on us, to start exploring the rest of the forest. It definitely wasn't so scary with the sun shining in through the trees. Maybe we should collect some apples. That's a good idea, Zozo. A skeleton horse is still a horse, and I love apples. We happily collected apples, until a huge shape came lumbering out of the dark. It was a skeleton dragon, a huge adult skeleton dragon with black bones. Oh wow, hey Mr. Skeleton Dragon, I'm Zozo, and I'm one of your kind. The adult skeleton dragon seemed relieved to see me. Oh, thank goodness, I've been looking for you everywhere. I'm in terrible trouble, and I need the help of another skeleton dragon. I just didn't expect you to be so small. I may be small, but I've got a big heart. How can I help you? A friend of mine, the blue skeleton dragon, was taken by something. Some tall, shadowy entity. And I need help in getting him back. That sounds just like Mr. Dark. He terrorized us too. But don't worry, we'll help you get your friend back from Mr. Dark, no matter what. Thank you, Zozo, and friend. For now, I must go. Stay safe. The adult skeleton dragon flew away, leaving me and Sally alone. It was time to work on our first base, so we started breaking down trees and collecting sticks and wood. I was able to build a crafting bench and made my first set of wooden tools and weapons. These would be perfect for my first base. We found a clearing in the forest and started building ourselves a humble wooden shack with one bed and a stable outside. But all the while, Sally looked a little concerned. What's wrong, Sally? That skeleton dragon's friend. We better work hard at getting him back. Mr. Dark only keeps people at Playland for a hundred days. After that, well, you don't want to know. And she was right. I really didn't. On day three, I was wandering through the forest looking for apples to eat and more supplies that I could use to upgrade my base. Nothing like fresh air and a walk to make a morning happy and healthy. But during my walk, I saw a hulking figure behind the trees, a mutant skeleton. He looked big and a little scary, so when he turned around and looked at me, I ran for the hills. Not today, mutant skeleton. I returned to my base where I felt a lot safer and started mining into a nearby hill to gather some stone. Then I made made my first set of stone tools, a stone sword, and even started building a sturdy stone wall around my base. But as I was building my wall, I was suddenly approached by an angry looking gang of rogue tomatoes. They somehow looked both silly and like they meant business. Don't you laugh at us, bub. Or I'm gonna give you a knuckle sandwich with extra ketchup, you hear? Those were fighting words, so I decided it was time to give my brand new stone sword some action. If it's a tussle you want, it's a tussle you'll get, tomatoes. I fought them all, making short work of them with my stone sword. And after their defeat, one of them dropped a milk bucket. 
Guess I'll just keep this, in case it comes in handy. That's when I looked up and noticed it was getting dark. I'd need to finish the wall another day. I definitely didn't want to get stuck outside while Mr. Dark was on the prowl. Instead, I went back to my bedroom and got a good night's sleep. On days four and five, I woke up to the sound of Sally the Skeleton Horse entering my room. Hey, Sally, what's up? Zozo, I noticed you brought back a milk bucket last night. You should drink it. Milk contains calcium, and calcium is good for your bones. It's the perfect way for a skeleton dragon to get stronger. That sounded like a great idea. So I chugged the milk and immediately found myself getting stronger. I grew to a big, tougher form with six hearts rather than three. This is more like it. I'm gonna go take a walk in my new form. I'll finish up the wall while you're out. So that's what I did. But this time, I didn't wanna just walk through the forest. I went all the way to the desert so I could feel the heat on my bones. Ah, <sighs> sun and skeletons go together like peanut butter and jelly. I turned and saw a wither skeleton further out into the desert. He seemed to be fishing in a pond. I couldn't believe how many friendly skeletons I was running into these days. I made my way over the small hill to him. Enjoying the sun, fellow skeleton? Wanna come back to my base and hang out with me and my horse friend, Mr. Wither Skeleton? We're putting together a group to help save an innocent skeleton dragon from an evil man. Sounds good to me, brother. Let's boogie. The Wither Skeleton and I traveled back to the base together, and we came back just in time because a big, angry ravager was trying to break down my defensive wall. Uh-oh. Wanna help me run off this nasty customer, Wither Skeleton? Heck yeah, let's do it! With the both of us ready to fight, the Ravager was outmanned. We didn't manage to defeat it, but it did run away. By then, it was already almost nightfall. We needed to get some sleep, in case Mr. Dark came out looking for us. I installed a second bed in my cabin, as well as some more furniture, and invited the Wither Skeleton to come stay with us. Sounds good to me, brother. Sleepover time. On day six through eight, me and the Wither Skeleton went out into the forest and collected some more yummy apples. But that wasn't all we were looking for. We found the same cave that Sally and I had hidden in the first night I arrived here. It's mining time. And then I mined all over that cave. It didn't take me long to find enough iron and coal to smell myself some new weapons and tools. Iron weapons, iron tools, I'm really moving up in the world. After leaving the cave with our loot and returning to the forest, we were suddenly ambushed by the same Ravager, looking for revenge. Be ready to fight, Wither Skeleton. This won't be easy. I was born ready, Zozo. But sadly, he wasn't actually born ready. That Ravager was way stronger than we thought. We fought the Ravager until it was defeated, but the Wither Skeleton was destroyed in the process. Wither Skeleton, no, I'll never forget you. He dropped his hat, which I decided to take with me. He had also dropped a flint and steel, a useful item for lighting fires. On the way back to my base, I encountered a soul vulture hanging out amongst the trees. Hey, Mr. Soul Vulture, wanna come back to my base? I figure us bone brothers should stick together. Hmm, is it cozy? The coziest in all the forest. Well, I can hardly say no to that, can I? The soul vulture came back to my base with me where I built him his own room. I also used some of my excess iron to create an iron golem to guard the base. Now I can sleep a little easier. On days 9 to 10, I was woken up in the middle of the night by something scratching my window. I looked up and saw Mr. Dark, his bright purple eyes staring in through my window. He was so creepy, I could barely stand it. Mr. Dark, how did you get past my guard wall and my iron golem? Mr. Dark gave a creepy little giggle. I can go anywhere I want at any time I want, Zozo. No walls are too high, no trenches are too deep, and no golem is too strong. If I wanted to, I could open your door and walk into your bedroom right now. And why don't you? Because where'd be the fun in that? Silly little dragon boy, you'll choose to come to Playland with me. I just know you will, and you'll have a wonderful time. I'll be keeping my eye on you, Zozo. I'll come back when you least expect it, and then you'll be all mine. Then he disappeared, and I couldn't get back to sleep for the rest of the night. On days 11 through 12, still feeling shaken up from my encounter with Mr. Dark the night before, I decided to build some base improvements. I made the wall taller and started digging a trench around the outside of the wall so the only way to get in or out would be the front gate, guarded by my iron golem. This should keep that nasty midnight creep away. 
After my work was done, Sally the Skeleton Horse approached me with a suggestion. Zozo, you should train yourself and get stronger by visiting new biomes. How about a trip to the beach? Yeah, I could use a trip to the beach after a week like this. I made my way to the beach with Sally for a mixture of relaxation and hardcore strength training. And it didn't take long for us to need it because a bunch of angry iron chickens started attacking us. We're the iron chicken muggers. And believe us, we can be pretty foul. So you better hand over all your buck buck bucks. Thankfully, with Sally and I working together, we were able to defeat the Iron Chicken Muggers and keep all of our hard-earned money. This kind of thing is exactly why I hate chickens. We kept exploring until we found another skeleton friend, a skeleton deer. So of course, I invited her back to my base. Gee, thanks. I'd love a new place to stay. I've been getting tired of all this sand. The skeleton deer followed us back to the base, where I built her a new section of the stable to sleep in. This is so comfy. Thanks, Zozo. Don't mention it, skeleton deer. And by the way, I saw you fighting the iron chickens. You were good. But if you want to get better, I recommend seeking out the necromancer. He can mentor you to greatness. The necromancer? That sounds like a plan. On days 13 to 15, I left my base and began searching the forest for the necromancer. I'm sick of being afraid and hiding away when the bad guys come. I want to be strong enough to be brave and fight back. But it turned out I was talking to myself a little too loudly because an angry stone monster came running at me through the woods. Uh oh, sorry about the noise. I'm guessing we can't just talk this out. He did not want to talk it out. Instead, he chased me and I ran as fast as I could on my skeleton dragon legs, but he was faster. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. But just as he was about to catch me, something burst out of the tree line as quick as a flash. It was the mutant skeleton I'd run away from earlier. He pulled out his bow and easily defeated the stone monster, really saving my bones. Thank you, mutant skeleton. I'm so sorry for running away earlier. I guess I learned a valuable lesson about judging on appearances. No problem, Zozo. I know I can look a little scary sometimes, but really, I'm out here trying to help. Want to come and stay at my base for a while? I'm putting together a team. I'd love to, but there's too much work to do protecting people out here. Perhaps I'll drop in for a visit sometime, though. Eh? Me and the mutant skeleton went our separate ways, and I continued searching for the fabled necromancer until I saw a gremlin hunt around, looking clearly distressed. What's wrong, little gremlin? I'm in trouble, man. These, like, nasty jungle spiders have been chasing me all day, and I'm worried they're gonna get me. Hmm, stand back, little gremlin. This sounds like a job for Zozo. With my trusty sword, I found that nasty swarm of jungle spiders and took them out before returning to the gremlin. Whoa, Zozo, you're like a real hero. That was awesome. No problem, little gremlin. Say, you know where I might be able to find a necromancer? Oh, the necromancer. You'll find him in the west of here. Keep heading in that direction, and you're sure to meet him. Thank you, Gremlin. That's exactly what I needed to hear. For days 16 to 19, I began my journey west in search of the necromancer, until I heard a terrible crashing noise coming from the distance behind me. It sounded like it was coming from my base. I immediately turned tail and ran all the way back, only to see that my defensive wall had been destroyed, and a dangerous zombie taiga was attacking my base. What are you doing, you meanie? It's nothing personal, kid. Mr. Doc told me to do this. If I don't hurt you, he'll hurt me. That's just the way it is. I turned and saw something awful. He'd already destroyed the skeleton deer and the soul vulture. Sally, the skeleton horse, was my only companion left. That's it. You're going down. I pulled out my sword and attacked the zombie taiga, but it seemed like he deflected the hits without any effort. He was almost unstoppable. That was just embarrassing. If you couldn't defeat me, you'll have no hope against Mr. Dark. I'm out of here. And with that, the zombie taiga fled, leaving me in the ruins of my base with two of my friends, gone. I feel useless, like I can't protect anyone. That's when a gang of mossy skeletons turned up. They looked frightened and said they'd heard I'd been offering other skeletons a place to stay. Of course you can stay here, new buddies. I'm gonna need to make a few renovations first. I built a new barracks on the side of my base for the mossy skeletons to live in. They seemed quite happy with their new place, and I took the time to rebuild some of the defenses that the zombie taiga destroyed. 
But I can't just defend my base. I need to be able to defend myself too. I mined for more iron and coal until I had everything I needed to smelt myself a new set of iron armor. I may have lost a battle, but I wouldn't lose the war. On days 20 to 22, I left my base to search for some statue building materials. After all, a cool statue is great for inspiring everyone to do their best. But on my way out to mine some stone, I was ambushed by a green troll with an axe to grind. Well, more specifically, he had a giant fist. I've got no interest in feeding any trolls today. With my sword at the ready, we engaged in a tense duel. Thankfully, with my new iron armor, I was able to withstand his attacks and defeat him. Iron and bone beats flesh. Afterwards, I traveled further through the forest until I stumbled upon a desert with the remains of a giant skeleton. Whoa, this is perfect for building a cool statue. And I know exactly what I'll make with them. I started mining the ribs one by one, making sure I didn't fall into the pools of lava. By the end of it, I had all the bone blocks I'd ever need. On the way back, I encountered a herd of wild sheep grazing and decided I'd tame them and lead them back to the base. Because you never know when some wool will come in handy. When we reached the base, I made a new, fenced off section where the sheep could graze and be left to their own devices. And with that out of the way, it was time to start statue building. Laying down the base is one of the most important parts, so the statue doesn't just tumble over. Can you guess what the statue is going to be yet? Let me know down in the comments. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the forest to search for the necromancer. I needed his teachings to help me get stronger and defeat Mr. Dark. While wandering through the woods, I got attacked by a nasty gang of rotten rats. They tried to bite me and give me some nasty diseases. When it comes to rats versus skeleton dragons, rats don't win. I defeated the last of them with my iron sword and continued searching. On the way, I ran into a wither skeleton jockey riding a spider. He reminded me of the wither skeleton who used to be my friend. Hey, Mr. Wither Skeleton Jockey, wanna come back and stay at my base? Nice offer, but no thanks. There are some evil things lurking in these woods, and I've learned not to trust anyone. Maybe some other time. All right, suit yourself. Stay safe out there. It felt like the day had been a total waste as I journeyed further into the forest. But just as I was ready to give up, I saw the necromancer himself sitting on a rock and meditating. No way, the necromancer, is it really you? Those who seek me will find me, little skeleton dragon. And I assume you've been seeking me. I have. I want you to mentor me and help me become more powerful. Well, young dragon, with great power comes great. Well, you have to have a good reason to have great power. So, what is your reason? I don't need it for myself. I need it to defeat Mr. Dark and save everyone he's captured. That, little dragon, is a good reason. Your training begins now. For days 27 to 31, the necromancer gave me my first challenge. To defeat an entity as evil and spooky as Mr. Dark, you need to learn to conquer your fear. It's okay to be afraid, Zozo, but true courage is knowing that there are some things you must do, even if they make you feel afraid. What would you have me do, Master Necromancer? Do you see that nearby cave? It contains a monster. I want you to go in there and defeat it to help gain control of your fear. If you complete this first challenge, I'll give you a reward. I believe in myself. I can do it. Good. And you can take this bat to help you. It will freeze your opponents for three seconds. May it come in handy. I took the necromancer's bat and went into the cave. It was dark and scary, and I could feel myself getting nervous. But I took deep breaths and kept going. I needed to strengthen my courage to defeat Mr. Dark. The deeper parts of the cave weren't any better, only some lichen and mushrooms giving off faint light. Suddenly, a scary, growling soul eater leaped out of the darkness toward me, ready to attack. I stayed calm and hit the creature with my bat, studying it. I'd pass the test. Okay, now it's time to get out of here. On days 32 to 35, my new mentor rewarded me for passing the first challenge by giving me a potion of strength. I immediately drank it and felt myself getting bigger and tougher. This training was really paying off. I have to be at least twice the size I once was. This whole thing made me feel so happy, I decided I'd go back to my base and tell the mossy skeletons and Sally the skeleton horse about my victory. And on the way, I encountered the wither skeleton jockey that I'd met a few days before. 
Hey, Jockey, have you had any second thoughts about coming to my base? Well, now that you mention it, I have been getting some eerie vibes lately. Maybe we should stick together after all. But those eerie vibes didn't come from nothing. Neither of us noticed it, but the day had gotten away from us. The sun was going down, and the night was upon us. That's when Mr. Dark himself came creeping out of the trees. Ooh, new friends, I'll take you to Playland with me. We'll have so much fun. He grabbed the wither skeleton jockey with his long spindly arms. Zozo, help me, I'm being kidnapped. But I couldn't help him. Mr. Dark was too fast and too strong, and all I could do was run. My base may have been the only place that was safe at night. On the way back, I encountered an ancient spirit villager who started chasing me, and I was too afraid to even fight him. I just ran away. All that training, useless. I don't know if I'll ever be able to defeat Mr. Dark. On days 36 to 39, I woke up and took the jockey spider to the stable. When I heard noise coming from my front gate, I made my way over to see a familiar face waiting outside of my base. It was the same zombie taiga who attacked my base and destroyed soul vulture and skeleton deer. This time, he's going down. I ran out, ready to fight. This time, I had full iron armor, so the zombie taiga's attacks weren't nearly as strong. What sorcery is this? Mr. Dark told me you'd be easy to defeat. This isn't fair! With the help of my new strength and the bat that the necromancer had given me, I defeated the zombie taiga and avenged my fallen friends! Speaking of friends, Sally the Skeleton Horse approached me with a wonderful idea. Zozo, we should make our way to the Stone Shores. I've heard that some of the friendlies over there have created some awesome upgrades. Oh really? Then there's no time to waste. We hightailed it over to the Stone Shores, where we saw an innocent skeleton being hassled by an ogre. We couldn't let that stand. Get away from that skelly! Sally and I charged in, and that was enough to scare the ogre away. He seemed thankful and gave us two rewards. The knockback upgrade, which increased the power of my weapons, and a treasure map. You hear that, Sally? We can use this to search for buried treasure. Now that sounds like a cool adventure to me, Zozo. Let's do it. For days 40 to 43, Sally and I followed the map until we arrived in the warm, dusty badlands. We were getting a little nervous because it was almost nightfall. We were right about that, but we didn't consider that Mr. Dark might send his minions to do the job for him. Look out, Zozo! Some night apparitions are coming straight towards us! Sally was right! Three big, scary night apparitions, I pulled out my sword, now with increased knockback, and fought them off. They were tough, but luckily, Sally and I made a good team, and we were able to defeat two of the three. The last one escaped to fight another day. Let's keep going, Sally! According to this map, we're really close to finding the buried treasure. Soon enough, we found an area of the ground with a big red X marked on it. Don't they always say X marks the spot, Zozo? Let's start digging. We mined down into the ground until we found a buried chest. And inside, there were a whole bunch of rubies. This is awesome. I know exactly what I'm going to use them for. On days 44 to 49, I continued my work on the statue. It was really coming along now. Can you see what I'm making now? I bet you can't guess. But while I was working on my statue, I saw a trader on a horse making his way through the forest near my base and decided to strike up a conversation. Hey, Mr. Trader, got anything cool on offer? It's your lucky day, dear customer, because I'm actually doing a two-for-one special on netherite ingots today. It's a rare and very valuable material. Perfect for a skeleton dragon like you. That sounds so cool. How much? I only take payment in emeralds. But don't worry. If you haven't got any, you can always raid the emerald mines of Alonia near here. They got abandoned by the workers when the boss decided not to pay them enough. So all the emeralds were left for the taking. I really wanted those netherite ingots, even though I didn't really know what I'd use them for. So I journeyed to the mines and collected as many emeralds as I could from underground. Netherite city? Here I come! I traveled back to my base and made the trade. The trader gave me my two netherite ingots and rode off. Pleasure doing business with you, Zozo. But I didn't have long to enjoy my fancy new ingots. As night fell, the third and final night apparition came back for revenge, and I needed to run out beyond the wall to take it on. You guys don't know when to quit, do you? 
Soon enough, I defeated the Night Apparition, but it made me realize that my base needed better defenses. If these monsters and Mr. Dark mainly come out at night, maybe they hate the light. Perhaps adding some torches to my wall would help ward them off. On days 50 to 53, I realized something horrible. The Night Apparition attack had just been a distraction, while someone else had sneaked into the stable and kidnapped Sally the Skeleton Horse. I ran to my mentor, the Necromancer, deep in the forest, and asked asked him where Mr. Dark's forces may have taken my best friend. Well, Zozo, I hate to tell you this, but it's likely that Mr. Dark's minions will be taking your friend to the Twisted Kingdom he calls Playland. But where can I find that? Even I don't know exactly, but my senses tell me that you should travel to the east. Your answers lay there. There was no time to waste. I didn't want Sally to get trapped in Playland, just like the other skeleton dragon's friend, so I immediately set off to the east, hoping to find her. But on my way, I was suddenly ambushed by a zombie spark ready to fight. But unlucky for him, I was ready to fight too. Nothing is going to stand in the way of me rescuing my friend. The zombie Spartan was tough, but I had the power of friendship on my side. It didn't take me long to strike him to submission with my enchanted sword. In his defeat, the zombie Spartan dropped something, two void worm mandibles. Huh, I already have a void worm eye. I better take them. They might come in handy. On days 54 to 57, having defeated the zombie Spartan, I continued searching for Sally the skeleton horse, and my search soon led me to a deep cave. Suddenly, it felt like everything got much darker around me. I'm never going to let Mr. Dark take you to Playland, Sally. That isn't your choice, Zozo. I turned and saw one of the shadows in the cave moving with bright purple eyes. It was him, Mr. Dark, standing right behind me. Do you want to come to Playland with me now? What did you do with her? I swung my sword and Mr. Dark teleported out of the way, appearing right behind me. She's playing with my friends right now, but later she'll play with me. Do you want to play with us, Zozo? I tried to hit him again, but Mr. Dark was too fast for me. He hit me with one of his long spindly arms and knocked me up against the wall, knocking out half of my hearts in one strike. Hmm, still too weak. We'll play again when you're stronger, Zozo. Mark my words. And then he disappeared, leaving me with nothing. A silver lobo approached me out of the darkness, looking worried, and gave me some apples to replenish my hearts. Thanks, Silver Lobo, you saved my life here. The Lobo told me about a secret room further into the cave where I might find some vital information. I went deeper into the cave, feeling around on the wall until I felt a button and pressed it, opening a secret door. There was blue fire torches on the wall and an old map left on the table with some locations marked. They must be keeping Sally at one of these locations. On days 58 through 62, I decided I needed to become stronger before I could find the location where they were keeping Sally. First, I went to the diamond mine the Silver Lobo told me about and took the old elevator down. I quickly found some diamonds near the entrance and started mining. I then saw what looked like an old abandoned mining camp. A chest inside of it had a book with the unbreakable enchantment. I don't think whoever owned this camp would mind if I used the crafting table to make my gear. I made myself a diamond sword and a diamond chest plate to match. I used the nearby anvil to put the unbreakable enchantment on my chest plate. Now this is one of the most powerful pieces of armor around. After that, I returned to my base to continue work on my statue. It's really coming along nicely now. I even got to use all those rubies that Sally and I collected, but I could use some more materials. I went out into the forest to hunt, but in the process, I found something remarkable, a magical, enchanted halo. I decided to try it on and immediately felt its magic empower me. I got stronger and healthier, going up to 14 hearts. Whoa, talk about a functional headwear. As I continued hunting in the forest, I stumbled upon a spider nest. I saw the same gremlin from before, stuck in their webs calling for help. The spiders noticed me and charged towards me. This was the perfect opportunity to test out my new gear, but they were no match for my diamond sword. After I dealt with them, I cut the web holding the gremlin and he fell down. He thanked me for saving him again and ran off into the forest. Next time I take on Mr. Dark, he's in trouble. I went back to my base, feeling a lot more confident, and found that a huge bone serpent was waiting for me. But don't worry, he was friendly. So, you're the skeleton dragon I've been hearing about. I heard something about this friend of yours. A skeleton horse? You want to find her? I recommend you look for an abandoned house on the plains.
case. Finally, a break in the case. You're a lifesaver, Bone Serpent, literally. Want to stay at my base? Well, since you're offering, why not? I built a new room with a pool where the Bone Serpent can stay. But by then, it was already nighttime. Mr. Dark would be on the prowl. I'd go find Sally first thing in the morning. On day 63 through 66, I was preparing to go on a rescue mission for Sally. But before I could leave, my mentor, the Necromancer, arrived to give me a gift. Zozo, I wanted to give you a gift before you went on your quest. Mr. Dark is a mutant Enderman, and this dagger will do extra damage against Enderman. But be warned, it'll be incredibly weak against anything that isn't an Enderman. Thank you, Master Necromancer. These will come in handy. I left my base, passed through the forest, and ventured out onto the plains. This was the exact direction that the Bone Serpent told me to go in. That's when I ran into a group of zombies and decided to test my dagger on them, and it did almost no damage. Wow, Master Necromancer was right. This dagger is useless against things that aren't Endermen. Instead, I pulled out my diamond sword and easily defeated the zombie horde before moving on with my quest. I got distracted again when I saw a villager, dressed like a craftsman standing next to a burning house. He looked like he needed help. Hey, mister, I'm Zozo. Can I give you a hand? Yes, please. My wife is trapped in that burning building, and I'm too old to rescue her myself. Please help me. I ran into the burning building and found the craftsman's wife waiting inside. Thanks to my training from the necromancer, I was able to stay cool under pressure and lay the craftsman's wife safely back out. He was delighted to see her. Thank you, Zozo. I owe you one for this, and I always repay my debts. On day 67 through 70, I arrived at the abandoned house in the plains where I figured they must be holding Sally. This place looks so spooky, but I need to do the right thing, just like my mentor taught me. I carefully entered the house, trying not to be detected. I noticed that there was a broken end portal inside. Huh, that's weird. But I was quickly distracted by the sounds coming from upstairs. I drew my sword and ran upstairs, seeing Sally the skeleton horse locked in one of the rooms. Don't worry, Sally, I'm here to help. Wait, Zozo, it's a trap. Three Endermen suddenly appeared all around me. I tried to fight back, but I wasn't fast enough. They kept teleporting and attacking me back. Little by little, I was backed into the corner. It looked like I was a goner until I saw something on the floor. Is that a potion of fortitude? It was. I quickly grabbed it and drank it, and it made me tough enough to collect my thoughts, remembering the gift from my mentor. I pulled out the dagger and charged in. He was definitely right about its strength against Enderman, because soon enough, all three were defeated, although I barely survived that. I went to free Sally from the locked room. We celebrated for a moment in the room before I let her out and headed towards home. Let's go and rest, Sally. I've missed you. I shared some of my apples with Sally as we walked home, happy to finally be reunited. On day 71 to 74, with Sally's help, I invited more skeleton horses to my base and let them stay in my stable. Though I had to take time to expand the stable so everyone could fit inside. Let me know if it gets too cramped in there. After I'd finished my renovations, I decided to journey down into the diamond mine again and collect more, you guessed it, diamonds. When I returned to my base, I used those diamonds to complete my set of diamond armor and enchant it with the protection enchantment to help improve my chances in an intense fight. When the armor was done, I noticed that I received a letter. Oh, it's the craftsman whose wife I saved from that burning house. He says he wants to meet me in the tavern of a nearby village. That's so exciting. On day 75 to 78, I did as the letter said and traveled to the nearby village. I found the craftsman waiting for me in the village tavern, just like he promised. Good to see you again, Zozo. After what you did, I've been thinking about a way to repair you. And while I'm not a rich man, as a craftsman, I can give you an idea of mine. If you're able to combine two netherite ingots, two void worm mandibles, and one void worm eye, you could create a dimensional carver, a special pickaxe that can teleport you between locations. Wait, I have all of those materials. That's incredible. I could build one right now. Thank you, Mr. Craftsman. I made my way over to a nearby crafting bench and made myself a dimensional carver and gave it a practice swing. Boom! I was teleported to the village outskirts with a group of great beasts charging at me. Uh-oh, better get out of here. I swung the dimensional carver again and boom, I was back in my base. Wow, this tool is amazing. Though I'll save it for emergencies in the future. 
On day 79 through 84, I started building a new storage shed for extra supplies in my base. You never know when you'll need the extra storage space. Then, I made a full set of armor for Sally, so she could be better protected when she's wandering through the forest. This is great, Zozo. Thank you. But then, I was running low on materials, especially stone and wood, so I decided to head out into the forest to cut down some trees and mine some more stone. While I was mining and lumberjacking, a passing mage noticed me and approached. Excuse me, young skeleton dragon, but would you happen to be Zozo? That depends. Do you work for Mr. Dark? Well, I used to, and there's something I want to get off my chest. You have to understand, Mr. Dark is pure evil. If ever there was good in him, it's gone now. You cannot reason with him. You cannot talk to him. The only joy he takes is in making others unhappy. So when you're dealing with him, just be careful. He is not to be messed with. And with that, the mage left. Guess that's my daily dose of nightmare fuel. On days 85 to 89, I returned to my base from the forest in the late evening, only to find out that the worst had happened. Mr. Dark was attacking my base with a whole gang of soul eaters. Look, friends, Zozo is back. He's here to join our little playtime. I want nothing to do with you or your deranged games. I just want you to stop bothering everybody. Hmm, yes, we could do that. Or we could play catch, soul eater, throw. One of the soul eaters pulled out a javelin and threw it at me. But then something strange happened. Rather than losing hearts, I started to get bigger and stronger. I'd become an evolved skeleton dragon, reaching my full size and going up 20 hearts. Whoa, I guess all that training is finally paying off. Wanna 1v1 me, Mr. Dark? Why should I have all the fun? My friends want to play with you too. Play with him, Soul Eaters. Mr. Dark vanished again, and the Soul Eaters ran towards me. With my new size and power, it didn't take me long to defeat them, which made me even more frustrated that I couldn't have taken on Mr. Dark there and then. Instead, I had to increase the size of my bedroom. A bigger skeleton dragon needs a bigger place to live. On days 90 to 94, I finally finished my statue. It's a giant cool skull statue showing how we skeletons stuck together and stood against the evil of Mr. Dark and his minions. Did you guess what it was before I just told you? Let me know down in the comments. Once the statue was finally done, I decided I'd give some extra training to my best friend, Sally the Skeleton Horse. We trained together on the base grounds by play fighting until she upgraded and became bigger and stronger. It feels so good to be powerful enough to fend for myself. Thanks, Zozo. I never would have gotten this far without you, Sally. And after training, Sally took me to her brewing station she had set up to make a bunch of healing potions. You never know when these will come in handy. On day 95 to day 97, I met with the necromancer in the forest. He had some more valuable advice for me. Zozo, I've heard of the location of a cabin in these woods, once owned by a person who was researching Mr. Dark. You might be able to find some valuable information there. That definitely seemed like a good lead, so I started searching the woods until I found a run-down old cabin. On the inside, I found a dusty old book inside a chest. Oh, I wonder what secret knowledge is inside. But I didn't have time to read it just yet. Suddenly, the cabin was under attack by a gang of fire elementals who'd come to burn down the cabin. I was lucky to have my diamond armor or I would have been burned up too. Okay, fire elementals, let's go. I took them on with my diamond sword and defeated them one by one, only getting a little burnt in the process. Great, now I can finally read this book. The book was filled with frantic notes, including a part that read, Mr. Dark, that maniac, he calls it Playland, but it's nothing like that. There's only death there. It's the end, nothing but the end. Of course, that explains the broken end portal too. Mr. Dark's Playland is actually the end. On day 98, I prepared the final enchantments for my weapons and armor and met with Sally one last time. She was nice enough to give me some more apples for the trip. I'm going to take on Mr. Dark. I discovered that he's hiding in the end. And without an end portal, I can use my dimensional carver to get there. You're not going alone, Zozo. I'm coming with you. But Sally. But nothing. I saved your butt the first time you came here. And you think I'm going to let you wander right into Mr. Dark's base? Alone? We started this together. And we're going to finish it together, too. Well, when you put it like that, I can't exactly say no, can I? But I can say that if you want more exciting adventures like this, you should subscribe to Zozo and find more of our videos by searching ZOZO -Zo on YouTube. I'll really appreciate it.
On day 99, Sally and I were ready to take the fight to Mr. Dark and free everyone that was still trapped in Playland. Let's do this, Zozo. Let's make it so the people of this world never have to fear the night again. That's what I'm talking about, Sally. Sally stood close to me, and I used the dimensional carver to teleport us all the way to the end so we could storm Playland together. But as soon as we arrived, we were immediately surrounded by a gang of Endermen. I immediately regret this decision. Yeah, me too. I pulled out my handy dagger, ready to fight off the Endermen, when I realized that they weren't here for me. They surrounded Sally, too fast for me to stop them, and grabbed her. They teleported away, taking Sally with them to who knows where. Sally, no! I knew why they'd done it. They were working for Mr. Dark, and Mr. Dark wanted me to face him alone. On day 100, I walked deeper into the end alone, looking for Mr. Dark. He didn't seem to be anywhere around here. That's when I noticed a cage containing a skeleton dragon just like me. I'd finally found him. Don't worry, fellow draggy. I'll get you out of here. I heard an evil laugh behind me, and Mr. Dark appeared. You've come to play with me at long last. I knew you would in the end, little one. I'm not so little anymore. I pulled out my dagger and turned to attack Mr. Dark, but he teleported out of the way and hit me again. He was even stronger than I remembered. Thankfully, I had a spare potion of healing to take to offset the damage. Play along, Zozo. It's no fun if you don't play. I tried to attack him again, but it was like fighting smoke. Every time I went for him, he teleported out of the way and attacked me back. It felt like all of my training was for nothing against him. You don't play fair, Mr. Dark. That's because it's no fun to play like that. And I'm sorry, Zozo, but you're starting to feel awfully boring to me. I looked behind me and saw that a giant chasm had opened up in the ground behind me. It was so dark down there, I didn't even know if there was a bottom. You'll find more friends down there, Zozo. You'll never want to leave. <laughs> While Mr. Dark was focused on me, I saw a figure charging up behind him. It was Sally, the skeleton horse. And still, Mr. Dark hadn't even noticed her. Any last words before you go into the dark, Zozo? Yeah. Playtime's over! What? Sally the Skeleton Horse charged into Mr. Dark and knocked him into the bottomless pit! He no! screamed and fell, never to be seen again! Can't say I'm gonna miss that creep. Let's save the prisoners and get out of here, Zozo. You know, that sounds good to me. On day one, I spawned in as a lava wither. Wow, I'm so little, and I only have four hearts. I can still hover in the air a bit, though, and can I... Yes, I can throw flaming wither skulls. Wow. Awesome. They don't seem very powerful, though. Hmm. It looked like I was in a town of some sort. All of a sudden, I was attacked by some villagers. One of them threw shears at me. How rude. But I'm keeping the shears. Hey, I know I threw some wither skulls, but I didn't hit anyone. I wasn't doing anything to you. I hurried and flew away, slowly. I wasn't very fast yet. Man, that was mean, but I can't afford to fight right now. I found a little cave and managed to find a corner that seemed safe. Tomorrow, I'll gather some supplies. And with that, I fell asleep. On day two, I woke up feeling refreshed. I better get some supplies so I can build a shelter for myself. I actually liked the cave I was living in, so I decided to stay there. I chopped down some trees, and as I hit them, I saw that the trees were catching on fire. Oh, whoops! Smokey the Bear is going to be so mad at me. I'd have to be careful about what I touched, since it seemed like I was pretty hot. Literally. I had enough wood to make some tools for myself, though. They were simple, but they did the trick. Then I almost made myself a nice little nook in the cave, but the pickaxe broke. I went to craft some stone tools, and while crafting, the crafting table set on fire. Oh man, I'll have to figure out a solution to this. I noticed that my hunger bar was getting a little low, but I didn't really know what withers like to eat. I guess I would have to go out and try a few things. I flew around the forest and found some mushrooms and other berries. I tried them, but it seemed like withers didn't like mushrooms. Blech. Looks like no fungi for this wither. I continued on and saw some animals. Maybe I would like some eggs or chicken. Sorry, guys. I ate the raw chicken, but I didn't like that either, and it barely refilled my hunger bar. I explored some more, but it started to get dark, so I decided to head home for the night. I'll try looking for some other food tomorrow. Maybe a nice salad? On day three, I went looking around for some plants and grass. I went for the grass, but it only dropped seeds. Then I had the idea to use the shears on it, and voila, I got some dried grass. I decided to eat some dried grass, and finally it refilled my hunger a decent amount. Weird, but whatever does the trick, I guess. As I was eating, I thought I saw something moving behind a tree. Huh? Hello? I didn't hear anything, so I assumed I was alone. I kept eating my dry grass. I went exploring and realized that I was on an island. The water was so clear and beautiful, I wanted to touch it. I reached out, and it hurt me. Oh, I don't think I like water anymore. I mean, I'm literally made of lava, so it makes sense. 
I made sure to gather up some grass for later. I flew away from the shore. I decided to explore closer to the center of the island. There were lots of trees and bushes. There seemed to be a mountain in the middle of the island. Wow. Wait, no, huh? it was a volcano. Oh, wow. I flew a little closer to the lower part of the volcano and realized there was some lava inside. Ooh, that feels nice. All of a sudden, some lava spewed up at me, hitting me out of the air. Ouch. I quickly flew away and headed back to my cave for the night. On days four to five, I left the cave to go exploring some more. I realized later that someone was following me. I wasn't sure what it was, but I could see it darting away when I wasn't looking. I decided to hide behind some rocks and then pop out at it. It came around the rock and I scared it. Ah! Ah! It was just a little butterfly. Hey, what are you doing following me? I'm not. Okay, sure. I kept going and waited again for the butterfly to come around the bend of a rock. You are following me. Admit it. Fine, I am. But I need your help. Huh? Me? What can I help with? You need to keep the island from exploding. Uh, what? The butterfly sighed and flew away anxiously. The island has been shaking and there have been small lava explosions. The town wise woman said that the island is going to be destroyed with a huge explosion. It can be prevented by a hero. Me? The town summoned you and you came. But one villager and his family were opposed to the whole thing, and he's the one that attacked you. Rude. Right? Anyway, you're our only hope. Why me? Um, I assume it's because you're made of lava? That would make sense, but I have no idea how to do that. I need to talk to the village wise woman. Agreed. The butterfly, who called herself Vanessa, led the way. On day six to eight, we arrived back at the village. We saw a few people around, but not many. Those are the people who attacked you, Bruce and his son Bobby. Vanessa pointed out some villagers outside with some pitchforks. They were arguing with some of the other villagers. Here, yeah, I know how to get to the wise woman's house. Vanessa led me around the back of some houses when we arrived at a home with a bell hanging outside. Nice. I've been expecting you, young hero. I flipped around to see a wise old woman with a basket of various dry grass on the table next to her. I assume you are hungry. Yes, thank you. She welcomed us in and she made Vanessa some tea. You want to know how to defeat the volcano? <laughs> well, I don't even believe that I can. I'm so small. You can. You just have a few steps to take. She brought out what looked like an orb. I knew that the volcano would erupt someday. The villagers turned to me to help, and I gave them a solution, but some would not listen. They will seek you out to hurt you. They believe you are evil and have ill intent. Huh? Why would they think I'm evil? Some withers are, but that is a choice, young friend. You choose your path. And for the sake of our island, I hope you choose wisely. The orb suddenly started to glow, and I saw a figure inside. It looked like me, but bigger and stronger. Wow. You can gain the ability to control the lava and tame the volcano, but it will take time. You will need to complete tasks in order to become the hero we so desperately need. What do I need to do? Only you will be able to know. The volcano will speak to you. Huh? Speak to me? Interesting. It had gotten late, so the woman invited us to spend the night. On days 9 to 10, Vanessa and I woke up and went outside to collect some food from the old woman. Before we left, the wise woman said that in the vision, she also saw our struggles with setting things on fire. That's when she tossed out a cobblestone crafting table. Just what we need, thanks. Vanessa started to fly away. I need to take care of some things, but you should go see what Bobby, one of the villagers, is doing. I went ahead, and that's when I noticed a villager, who I assumed was Bobby, was outside among the other townsfolk. He looked angry. Then all of a sudden, he jabbed his pitchfork at an innocent villager. Defend them. Where did that voice come from? I decided to listen to it. Hey, leave them alone! I dashed over to help the villager and stop Bobby. Get back, you devil! We don't want you here! Bobby tried to stab at me, but I moved out of the way. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to save the island. Just please stop hurting people. Bobby looked surprised. You're not going to eat us? Ew, gross! I mean, no. Why would I do that? Bobby looked shocked and he lowered his pitchfork. My father has been telling everyone that withers are evil and can never be trusted. They feed on the souls of men. Well, I definitely don't. I just like grass. Bobby seemed confused, but also relieved. He looked at me and nodded. I will follow you, Tiny Wither. I know that I had my doubts, but you seem like you really care about our people and our island. And I did. I knew they were just trying to make their way in the world like me. We could all live together in harmony. Just then, Bobby's father, Bruce, ran out of the house with a pitchfork. He ran towards me, but Bobby blocked him. Dad, don't hurt him. He's just trying to help. Get out of the way, boy. You don't know what you're talking about. Then Bruce jabbed his pitchfork at Bobby. Defend them. Hey, leave them alone. I spun towards Bruce, pushing him away. As I did, I threw one of my tiny little flaming wither skulls at him. It wasn't much, but it did a little bit of damage. It also gave him some wither effect. You see, he's an evil creature. He will only cause pain and misery wherever he goes. I am not evil. The only evil here is you. And with that, threw another flaming wither skull. It didn't take Bruce out, but it did bring him down. Stop him. 
Make sure he doesn't hurt our friend again. Bobby smiled at me and chained Bruce up, took his pitchforks, and took him off to the jail. I'll come for you, Wither. You won't succeed in your evil plan. Bobby came back over as Vanessa flew back as well. Thank you... Zozo. Zozo. Thank you, Zozo. You are a welcome friend. All of a sudden, I felt a power surge through me, and I leveled up into a slightly bigger Wither. I had more hearts, and my flaming Wither Skull seemed more powerful too. Then I heard the ethereal voice again. Well done, Zozo. I looked around, but I didn't see where it came from. Oh, neat. Vanessa flew around me and did a little happy... dance? I don't know, but it looked fun. Wow, that was amazing! Thanks, now let's see what my new Wither Skulls can do. I launched some skulls and saw that they did more damage than before. There was more room to grow, but this was definitely a good start. I felt amazing, I also felt a warmth in my heart. I think the voice I heard was the volcano calling to me. I defended the people, and it was happy. On days 11 to 12, Bobby helped me build a house in the village. Well, it was more like a nice cave in the side of a rock, since I would burn wood if I touched it. We figured that I should stay close. Vanessa flew in and saw that I was making a new home, and informed me that while she was gone before, she had decorated my old cave. Wow. And now that I was building a new place to live, she was sad I wouldn't be using her improvements. I told her not to worry, as I planned on bringing everything she had done in the old base to this new one. She seemed to like that and did her little happy dance. As I made my way to the cave, I noticed some spiders outside of it. They weren't too much of a threat, and I took them out easily. Easy peasy. I ate a bit of grass while looking at the new entrance of the cave, and one of the small spiders jumped up behind me and tried to bite me. I took it out with one hit. I went in and gathered my things, but before I could grab all of them, a huge spider dropped down from the ceiling. Aw, oh, gross! Who you call gross, you three-headed freak? Hey, that's not very nice. The spider lunged at me and I dodged around him. I was able to use my fireballs, but he kept getting hits in. I didn't think I could defeat him, but I managed to take him down. Phew, that was close. I guess I wasn't as strong as I thought. I still had a long ways to go before confronting the volcano. I gathered the rest of my things and headed back to the village. On days 13 to 15, I made my way back to my new cave. On the way, I noticed a small alcove and decided to mine out some materials. I found some cobblestone, iron, clay, blackstone, diorite, and of course, some flowers. Perfect, I can make these into better tools and armor. I can also use them to upgrade my base. I made my way back to the village with my new materials, excited about what I had found. When I got back, some of the houses were on fire. Vanessa flew up to me. Zozo, the volcano erupted. It was just a small one, but some fireballs fell down from the sky and burned up some houses. I looked around and knew I needed to help. Bobby threw an empty bucket at me, and I hurried to the ocean to help take out the fire with the water bucket. Since I wasn't touching the water directly, I was fine and didn't get hurt. I asked Bobby to come with me, and we mined out some more stone. We needed to fireproof the houses, just in case. We helped the villagers make some improvements to their homes so they wouldn't catch fire again. It was hard work, but we all felt a little safer afterwards. Except I didn't get why the volcano was telling me to do things and then attacking people. There had to be some sort of explanation. While I thought about that, I decided to finish up my cave home by adding all of the things I had gotten from my old base. I also used some of the materials I had mined earlier. And last of all, I smelted down the iron so that I could craft some better tools and armor. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to the voice again. Be strong for them. I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I needed to find out. I went to the wise woman again and told her that the volcano had spoken to me. I also told her I didn't understand why it would attack the villagers. To answer that question, you must talk to Bruce. Huh? Bruce? The guy that tried to hurt me? Precisely. I didn't understand why, but I'm sure I would figure it out. Subscribe. Subscribe? Well, I guess if the volcano said it, then it's pretty important. I made my way out of the house into the jail cell where Bruce was being kept. I need to talk to you, Bruce. Never. <laughs> he spit at me. Why do you hate me so much? He ignored me. I guess I could try again later. I headed out and went to find Bobby and Vanessa. I told them all about the volcano speaking to me and about Bruce. Bobby didn't seem surprised. My dad doesn't really talk that much. It would take a miracle to find out what he knows. Great. Off to a strong start. I got back to my cave and made some better upgrades to my house. I even built Vanessa a little nook to stay in. She seemed to really like it. Thanks, Zezo. You're awesome. She really did know how to put a smile on my faces. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with that same voice in my head. Be strong for them. Huh? Can you at least tell me how? Silence. Great. I got up and decided to go out to the beachfront to look for some things and gather supplies. It was beautiful, but I had learned my lesson about water. Just then, a huge crab came out and tried to snatch me. Luckily, I was made of lava and I burnt him. Ouch, that's rude. I wanted to eat you. Trust me, you don't want to eat me. The crab looked at me, confused. You're not a shrimp with three heads? No, I'm a lava wither. Zozo, to be exact. A lava wither? Haven't seen one of those since the last one was summoned. Wait, there was another one? Huh? When? The crab clicked his claws for a minute and thought. Probably like 40 years ago. Something like that. That was a small thing then. 
This was new information. Thanks, you've been a big help. I would say thanks to you, but you're not a shrimp, so I'm even hungrier. And with that, the crab skittered away. What a weird guy. We had almost forgotten why we came to the beach, but then remembered and picked up some more sand. On days 23 to 26, I headed back to the village and started smelting the sand. Vanessa and Bobby came to say good morning. I told Bobby and Vanessa about what I learned from the crab. Another wither was summoned? I wonder why nobody ever mentioned it. Yeah, I wonder. Hmm. I decided to talk to the wise woman again. She would have been around then, so she must know something. I confronted her and she sighed. I had hoped that Bruce would have told you, but I suppose I must. She grabbed her orb again and I saw images flash across it. About 40 years ago, two young men in the village decided to play with magic. They had read about withers and decided that they wanted to summon one. They grabbed the items required from a weird magical room. They went about it correctly, but there are always risks. Once the wither was summoned, using magma blocks and wither skulls, it befriended the two young men. They kept it secret for a long time, but the wither wanted to be free. The boys promised that they would let him go, but they never did. The wither grew bitter and despised humans, especially the ones who had summoned him. One day, he managed to break free from its bonds. There was an argument between the three, but the wither had had enough. He attacked the village and the two young men. Let me guess. Bruce was one of those young men. The other died trying to save Bruce's life. His name was Marcus. So what happened to the wither? It laid the village to ruins, destroying most, and then escaped, taking captivity in the volcano. It grew over time and now inhabits it. It seeks revenge on all humans, but it's been biding its time. So it's not the volcano that is attacking people. It's the wither living inside. The old woman nodded. But the spirit of the volcano has been battling with it for many years. It has grown weak, nearly on the brink of collapse. That is why we need you, Zozo. You must restore the volcano and defeat the wither corrupting it. That was a lot to process. This wither had been growing for over 40 years. How could a small wither like me stand against something so powerful? On days 27 to 31, I woke up and knew where I needed to go. I went to Bruce and told him what I had learned. He looked tired today, not as angry. I know what I did was wrong. I messed with power that I had no right to use. I wanted something special, and I treated it like garbage. It's all my fault that this is happening, but I can't fix it. He seemed so sad, but I knew what I needed to say. That's why I'm here. I will protect you. All of you. Bruce looked at me and he smiled. I owe you my life, Zozo. Thank you. I unlocked the gate and let Bruce out of the jail. He couldn't embrace me, so he bowed a little bit instead. I will follow you, little wither. You are our strength. Just then, I felt another surge of power, and I leveled up into a bigger wither. I was now adult size. I felt that calm again, and then I heard the voice. Well done, Zizu. I was on the right path. Now, I just needed to prepare. On days 32 to 35, I tested out my new abilities. I could shoot bigger fireballs and could even fly faster. Bobby heard the explosion and came to take a look at what was happening. He was impressed. Bobby gave some materials and helped to set up an obstacle course with some targets to train with. We had to keep some water on hand though, so I wouldn't burn up all the trees. Careful, Zozo. I'm trying. I just have no idea what to expect. I'll be fighting another wither, and I'm not even sure what tricks he has up his sleeve. Just then, I saw Bruce. He came over and decided to help me out too. He showed me how to do the crawling exercise. I was too big for it, so I just flew over the obstacle. Bruce was not impressed. He then showed me how to aim my shots with some target practice. I think I'm getting the hang of it. I had hit the target, but Bruce suddenly drew his bow at me. He started shooting, and I successfully dodged some arrows, but some hit me. When he stopped, he told me he was trying to teach me how to dodge. You could have given me a heads up first, but hey, thanks for your help. No problem, Zozo. Anything for you. Anything? Um, within reason. Good to know. He smiled, and we all headed back to the village for some food. When we got there, there was a commotion at the center square. What's going on? A small eruption came up out of the ground and swallowed a house. We looked and indeed, there was a large spot where the house should have been. Instead, there was a pool of lava. Was anyone inside? No, thank goodness, but it's not safe here. The villagers all argued until Bruce hushed them. We will take care of this. We will fortify the village and take precautions. The villagers seemed a little at ease, but still scared. I was going to give it my all to protect these people. I just needed to know what to do next. On days 36 to 39, I waited for the voice of the volcano to guide me. There wasn't anything, and I felt a little bit frustrated. Why aren't you talking to me? Nothing. I decided that I would just wait, patiently, or at least try to. Bruce and I helped to further fortify the village. 
He threw us some materials, and we made some cobblestone walls. As we were doing so, Bruce brought up another idea. Hey, Zozo, we want to build a statue in your honor. Also, as a reminder of hope, do you have anything in mind? I thought for a minute and then told Bruce what I would like. He smiled. That sounds perfect. We gathered the needed supplies and started to clear a spot for the statue. We built part of the base and hoped to get it all done in a few days. Can you tell what it is? On days 40 to 43, we went out to explore the island. I guess I had some other things I needed to do before the volcano would speak to me again. We went looking around the volcano when something caught my eye. It was a large cave. I went in and saw that there were some diamonds. I quickly mined them all up along with some other materials. With this, I can make some diamond armor. Neat! I noticed some lava running through a part of the tunnel and wondered if that's how the houses were being swallowed up. I tried to create some barriers just in case. It felt so nice and warm, I decided to take a break and enjoy the lava. Just then, I felt something grab me from behind. I managed to squirm around and saw a giant squid was dragging me into the water. I wasn't burning him because his tentacles were wet, so I was helpless. Oh no! He swam into the water, pulling me with him. When I touched the water, I solidified and was basically useless. I tried to gargle to make him stop, but he kept swimming further and further down. I saw my hearts dropping and thought this was the end. Just then, the squid released me into an alcove. Out of the water, I transformed back into a lava wither. My warm heart was enough to melt the stone back into lava. Hey, there you go, friend. I have saved you. Huh? Saved me? You almost destroyed me. The squid looked confused. Wait, you're not Lily. No, who's Lily? My daughter. Huh? I looked around and saw some axolotls coming up to me. That's not her, Paul. You need to stop snatching people. I looked at the axolotl and she looked at me. There was absolutely no resemblance. Sorry about Paul. He is Lily's friend and she disappeared a few days ago. We think she might have been kidnapped by the other clan of axolotls. They live nearby, but their keep is protected by a shark. Well, it sounds like you need help. I'll go look for her and bring her back to you. Really? Wow, that is so kind of you. Here, you will probably need this. The axolotl gave me a diving suit. I guess that solved the problem of me not being able to go into the water. Off onto another adventure. On days 44 to 49, Paul guided us close to the rival axolotl clan. He suddenly stopped and told us he saw the blue axolotl somewhere around here one time, but not sure exactly where. We thanked him anyway. I was close to the surface and took a look to see where I was. I recognized the area. I was next to the dry grass field. This was a great opportunity to use the diamonds I got, so I crafted a diamond sword, pickaxe, and shovel. That's when the crafting table caught on fire. Ah, not this again. The bench broke before we could craft all of the diamonds. Darn it. Well, at least I got some tools. Better than nothing, I guess. That's when I noticed a nice looking lagoon. Inside of it, I spotted a cave. It seemed empty, so I made my way underwater to take a look. Inside the cave, I thought I could see the axolotls hiding in there. Just then, I was attacked by a shark. Hey, I'm just trying to save Lily. The shark didn't respond. He kept attacking me. Luckily, I had crafted a new sword, so I was able to take him out pretty quickly. I swam up to the cave and emerged from the water onto a dry area. The axolotls looked terrified of me. I just want to take Lily back home. One larger blue axolotl moved forward. Lily is where she belongs. She loves me and wants to stay here. Huh? I didn't see Lily anywhere, so I really didn't trust this guy. Then I heard a voice. Help! I'm in here! That must have been Lily. Her own choice, huh? The blue axolotl jumped at me and attacked. The other axolotls backed away, clearly frightened. I was able to take down the leader quickly, and the other axolotls thanked me. Thank you, stranger. We've been captive to Blake for far too long. He wouldn't let us out and he kidnapped Lily as a way to start a war with the pink axolotls. Why? He was obsessed with Lily for months and wanted to marry her, but she said no. Then a few days ago, he captured her. Well, you're all safe now. I went around the corner and found Lily trapped in a cave. I freed her and we all left the lagoon. I knew what I had to do. On days 50 to 53, I went back to the alcove of the pink axolotls with the blue axolotls and explained the situation. They made a truce and Lily's mom was more than happy to have her daughter home. We owe you a great debt, Zozo. Take this as a token of our gratitude. Then Lily's mom gave me a huge stash of diamonds. Wow. wow, thank you. Of course. If what I heard is true, you are embarking on a great quest to save our island. You will need it more than we do. I thanked them again and then started the long journey back home. On days 54 to 57, I heard the voice of the volcano speak to me. Sacrifice for them. Sacrifice? Huh? I could do that. I just needed to figure out how. I quickly made myself an armor stand and hung my diving suit up. As I got to town, I noticed that the wise woman was outside looking at the sky. Huh? 
Welcome back, Zozo. You have been gone for a long while. I got mistaken for an axolotl and ended up saving the kidnapped daughter and joining the clans together. Hmm, yes, as I expected. I looked at her. She was still looking at the sky. She was an odd one, she was. Another two houses have collapsed while you've been gone. We did our best, but the wither grows angry. He is nearly on the brink of taking over the volcano. I was really worried. Maybe the villagers could leave the island and find refuge somewhere else. I suggested it to the wise woman. We don't run away from our problems, Sozo. Not run away, just stay somewhere else. We are safer here with you. Huh? I turned and saw Bruce and Bobby approaching me. Are you sure? Yes, young friend. All will be well soon enough. We all looked at the sky together for a minute. Then Bobby leaned over and whispered to me. What are we looking at? We slowly backed away as the wise woman continued to look at the sky. We went and gathered some more supplies so we could continue to work on the statue. It was basically done, we just needed a few finishing touches. We also built some new houses and made sure that the foundations were solid. We also built them over the water in hopes that the other wither would be less likely to attack them. The wither would try to take us down, but we would prevail. On days 58 to 62, I woke up to Vanessa flying around nervously. What's wrong, Vanessa? I think there's a storm coming, Zozo. Look! I looked outside and sure enough, it started to rain. I guess I could try to walk around in my diving suit, but it would definitely make me slower. I don't think I should go outside. I can't either. One raindrop could really hurt me badly. I hadn't thought about that, but it made sense that Vanessa was pretty fragile. Her wings were paper thin. It's okay though, we can have a day in. We can play a game. Vanessa flew around me excitedly. We ended up playing some games and she shared stories of her family. Where are they now? I'm not sure exactly. They all migrated when I was still little. My wing was hurt, so I couldn't go with them. That made me really sad. So they abandoned you? Vanessa landed. Her wings drooped a little bit. It's okay, Vanessa. I won't abandon you. I promise. Her wings lifted a little bit, and she fluttered around again. Thanks, Zozo. You're a good friend. Sacrifice for them. I sighed. I'm trying. Bobby and Bruce eventually came over looking for us. We explained the situation and they helped build a little overhang so we could travel to and from the village safely. I was really grateful and made some food for everyone. A little while later, I took the diamonds I had been given and made myself some nicer armor. Wow, this stuff was amazing. I could take on anything with this. On day 63 to 66, I went out to go test my new armor. I went out to the jungle area where I hadn't been before. Maybe I could find some more food items. I was getting a little bit low on dried grass and only had five peas left. Vanessa had told me about something called chocolate, and it didn't sound half bad. I would go looking for some cocoa beans. I was foraging through the trees when I entered a clearing. It looked like there was something written in the ground. Huh? It was that thing that the volcano had said to me. Be sure to listen to that little voice in your head telling you to subscribe. I started gathering some dried grass, when all of a sudden I heard some loud screaming. I didn't see anyone around me, but then I realized it was coming from the sky. The volcano was spewing fireballs. I hurried and dodged around them, but one hit me. It was small, but it was enough to knock me over. Apparently, these fireballs are extremely hot since they set me on fire. What is this magic? Huh? I'm not supposed to burn. Another fireball hit me. <laughs> Ouch, stop that. What's the matter? Can't take a little heat? I looked around, but didn't see anyone. It sounded like the voice of the volcano, but much harsher. Hello? Small little wither, you are nothing, but I can make you great. I assumed it was the wither inhabiting the volcano. I'm not listening to you. Why not? We are, after all, brothers. I'm not your brother. You are a bully, preying on the innocent. Innocent? They captured me. They kept me as a pet. I knew I was destined for more. I had my revenge with the power I possessed, but I am so much more now. The time will come when I obtain all the power of the volcano, and then I will truly have my revenge. What they did was wrong, but they're sorry. You don't need to blow up the entire island because you're mad. The voice screamed and fireballs rained down around me. I tried to dodge, but I couldn't handle all of it. A fireball hit me and everything went black. On days 67 to 70, I woke up in darkness. After a minute, my body lit up the space and I realized I was buried. Uh -oh. oh great, now I have to dig my way out. I started using my tools to chip away at the hardened lava. It took a few minutes, but I was finally able to free myself. The clearing I had been in was now just a large pool of lava. Good thing I was made of the stuff, otherwise I would have been trapped. I flew over the hot magma and started to make my way back to the village. If the wither had thrown this big of a tantrum here, I'm sure he did some damage to the village. When I arrived, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I realized the wither must have used up all his strength trying to hurt me. I was relieved. Just then, I saw Bobby running up to meet me. Zozo, come quick! Huh? I followed after him into his house. What's wrong? It's my dad. I can't find him anywhere. 
I thought for a minute, then something dawned on me. He must have gone to talk with the wither in the volcano. That's the only thing I can think of. Bobby looked sick to his stomach. He doesn't need to do that. He probably feels responsible, but don't worry, Bobby. I'll go find him. I hurried and flew back to my cave to gather some supplies. On my way out, I noticed Bobby was waiting for me with a pack on his back. I'm coming with you. It's too dangerous, Bobby. It's my dad. I have to do something. He was right. I wouldn't want to stay behind either. He will probably go back to where it all started, on the desolate side of the island. Then that's where we'll go. On day 71 to 74, we went tromping through the island slowly. Bobby couldn't fly like me, but I wanted to keep a low profile anyways. We mostly traveled in the jungle and gathered food as we went. Hey, more cocoa beans! I totally forgot to make chocolate when I was in the village. I'll have to do that when I get back. Sacrifice for them. Huh? Sacrifice what? The cocoa beans? I think the volcano was losing it. We kept traveling and came upon a small pond. We made a small shelter and decided to stay there for the night. Bobby couldn't really sleep because he was so worried about his dad. It's okay, Bobby. We'll find him. I sure hope so. It was quiet for a while, but then out of nowhere came some more spiders. Ah, oh, gross! Bobby helped me fight them off, and in no time, they were all gone. Now I really won't be able to sleep. I'll keep watch. Don't worry. Bobby nodded and then managed to eventually fall asleep. I hoped I could keep my promise to him. He really needed his dad, and I didn't want to see him lose him. On day 75 to 78, we kept trekking through the jungle. I could tell that Bobby was really tired, but he kept pushing through. We came to a large cliffside and realized that we needed to climb up it. We started to ascend, but then the island started to shake. Zozo! The island kept shaking, and then suddenly the cliffside split. Bobby fell halfway into the cliff and managed to hold onto a ledge. I looked down and noticed Bobby was barely holding on. I went to grab him, but remembered I would burn him. Uh -oh. Zozo, move! I maneuvered around them and managed to get to the ledge. Then I mined some blocks and created a safe path for Bobby to get back to safety. Wow, that was intense! You're telling me. We waited for a minute, just in case there was another earthquake. I hope the villagers are okay. I'm sure it's fine. I wasn't too sure, but I had to be hopeful. I need a break and some water. I nodded and let him rest for a bit. We decided to make camp and I made a small shelter. We set up a fire and Bobby was able to fall asleep right away. Having a near-death experience will do that to you. On day 79 to 84, we trekked further down the side of the volcano. We finally made it to the bottom and just as expected, there was a barren wasteland. Everything was dried up and dusty. Bobby looked around in awe. This is... Empty? Sad. I nodded in agreement. So much destruction and pain. It needed to be healed and restored to the way it once was. We started to make our way through, but then Bobby was attacked by some snakes. Ouch! He stabbed them with his pitchfork, but more were getting bites in. Hey, stop it! I threw fireballs at them and managed to take them out, but Bobby looked pretty bad. You okay, buddy? I think I've been poisoned. I need some medicine. It's in my bag. He managed to grab some and take it. The wilderness is not kind to you, my friend. Bobby laughed. No, it is not. After this, I'm never leaving home again. His laugh got quiet. I wonder how my dad is doing with all of this. You're weak. I'll go get you some food. Where? I looked around. Touché. Instead, I located a large dead branch and severed part of it off. I gave it to Bobby to use as a crutch. Thanks. We slowly but surely made our way further into the wasteland. On days 85 to 89, Bobby and I arrived at what looked like the remnants of the village. Some of the stones were still there, but there wasn't much. This must be it. My dad has got to be close by. Bobby threw down his crutch and went scrambling around the ruins. I went looking around, but didn't see much. Then I noticed something shining across the land. Huh? I flew toward it and saw a metal-looking container buried in the ground. I unearthed it and discovered it was a cage. Bobby came up beside me. Is that... It's where I kept it. Huh? We both flipped around to see Bruce emerging from a small hole in the ground. It was partially hidden by a rock, which is why we didn't notice it in the first place. Bruce approached us and touched the side of the cage. It's where I kept Aiden, the other wither. Bruce seemed really upset and he started to cry. I've made so many mistakes. All of this is my fault. I need to fix what I broke. Not like this, Dad. Don't sacrifice yourself. You only give him what he wants. Bruce didn't say much else, but we followed him into a small cave. We stayed there for a while to rest up while I devised a plan. On days 90 to 94, I woke up to Bobby yelling at Bruce. Huh? It's not your responsibility. Yes, it is. Don't try to stop me, Bobby. I'm doing this for you. For all of you. What about Zozo? He promised he would help us, and he will. I can't let someone innocent pay for my mistakes. Not anymore. Sacrifice for them. I knew what I needed to do. 
Bruce went back to his room in a huff, and I came up to Bobby. I know what I have to do. Just promise that you won't follow me, and make sure your dad stays here. Is this goodbye, Zozo? No, I'll be back. Don't you worry. Bobby nodded, and then went up to the opening of his dad's room. We lured Bruce towards the cage, telling him that we found something interesting in there. When Bruce wasn't looking, we pulled him inside the cage and locked the door. He looked stunned. This is for your own good, Bruce. Don't follow me. He sat there and begged me. Please, Zozo. It's okay, Bruce. It's what I'm supposed to do. On days 95 to 97, I continued flying toward the volcano. It spewed lava here and there, but I dodged past it. When I was a good distance away, I stopped and hovered. Aiden, I've come to talk to you. The voice I heard before let out an ugly scream and spewed more lava at me. You dare to call me what that monster named me? I'm here to take his place, Aiden. I know you hate him, but he needs to live. Take me instead. I saw the lava spew out further, almost hitting me. Why would you sacrifice yourself for such measly humans? Because it's the right thing to do. The voice laughed. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. I moved closer to the volcano to see if I could spot Aiden. Suddenly, the volcano reached out and snatched me, pulling me into its burning embrace. Everything went black. On day 98, I woke up inside the lava. I heard the voice of the volcano. Well done, Zuzu. I felt a powerful surge run through me, and I burst from the ground into the air. I leveled up into a full-sized wither. Wow. But then I felt a different kind of power. Huh? It was much bigger and stronger than me. I realized I could control the volcano. Wow. I focused my energy and forced Aiden to fly out. It was out of the volcano, but the fight wasn't over. He was as big as I was, probably stronger. But what choice did I have? I flew toward him, spewing lava and shooting witherheads. He fired witherheads back at me, but at long last, one of my wither skulls knocked Aiden down. On day 99, I approached Aiden. He looked like a normal wither like me, but he shook with anger. How dare you! That was my home! You have no right to use all that power for evil. This ends here, Aiden. I commanded the lava to burst up and around him and solidify to his body, caging him in. He was stuck, and he knew it. Let me go! I have to make them pay! They're all evil and can't change! They don't deserve to live! You're wrong, Aiden. And with that, I slashed at Aiden and defeated him. Thank you, my friend. You have proven yourself worthy of my power. The volcano spoke to my mind, and I felt a stronger connection with it. Wow. I was now its guardian. If I stayed worthy of it, it felt right. On day 100, I freed Bruce and told him the good news. He followed me and Bobby back to the village where we all lived happily and safely. The people celebrated, and I finally made some chocolate chip cookies. We also finished the last part of the statue, and it looked awesome. Everything was right on the island, finally. On day one, I spawned in as the Grim Reaper. Then I noticed I was tiny, and I only had three hearts. What is this nonsense? I looked around and saw that I was in front of a castle. Ooh, this looks interesting. I'll take a look inside. I opened the door and called out. Anybody home? Maybe one of my friends lived here or something. I started wandering around and found myself in a throne room. What is that? I saw a man with a mutant wither skeleton. He was holding a scythe. Wait, I think that's my scythe. How did you get it? The man screamed in rage and pointed at me. Destroy him. A bunch of zombies came out from the back room and I gasped in shock. Without even thinking, I fired an icy blast that froze some of the zombies solid. Huh, that's interesting. I guess this is because I'm as cold as death. I ran out the door and down the stairs as the zombies followed me. That was not what I was expecting. And why does that guy have an army of zombies? That's not right. I found a small cave and decided to sleep there for the night. Tomorrow, I'll find out what's going on. On day two, I left the cave to go exploring. I walked for half a day until I found my way to the Atom Forest. I don't really have a home, so I guess I'm gonna have to make one. I started collecting some wood to make a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. After some additional mining and crafting, I had some simple stone tools and weapons. Well, it's better than nothing. I had been working so hard all day, so when I stopped, I realized I was hungry. What does a Grim Reaper eat? I found some cows and pigs and cooked up some food for myself. It didn't do anything to help. In fact, it made me feel sick. Gross, I need to find something else. I noticed that it had gotten dark. Suddenly, a group of zombies popped out and started attacking me. With my new stone sword, I was able to take them out easily. They had dropped some meat and I stared at it hungrily. Maybe this will help me? 
I ate the meat, and sure enough, my hearts were restored. I feel much better now. I made it back to my base and worked on a few more things before heading to bed. On day three, I went back out to find more materials for the base. It was safe enough, but I wanted to make some improvements. It turned out to be a nice day. I hope nothing too crazy happens today. I realized I had spoken too soon, because just then, I heard an awful crash. I ran to see what the noise was when I saw a dread queen fighting a bunch of zombies. Hey, leave her be! I rushed forward with my weapons. The zombies started to attack me when I remembered my trick at the castle. I fired out some ice blasts and froze up some of those nasty zombies. The others noticed and started to run away. Nice job, Death. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Did you shrink? Who are you? I'm Famine. Do you know me? Uh, I'm sorry, no. Oh, this must have been Lord Terror's doing. I knew he was up to no good. I was so confused at this point. Famine could see that I was overwhelmed. You are the Grim Reaper, or Death. I'm Famine, and we have two friends, War and Pestilence. We establish order in the world. But Lord Terror, as he calls himself, started messing with stuff. He's been infiltrating the villages and turning people into undead. That's horrible. Those souls need to be freed and move on. I thought that's what you were planning, but nobody has seen you for a while. Now I know something bad happened. You're small and you don't look like yourself. This is a lot to take in. How about we get back to my base? It's not a castle, but it's safer than out here. Sure. Famine and I made our way back to my base, just in time for the sun to set. On days four to five, I helped Famine make a little home at my base. I was driven out of my home by the undead. I guess Lord Terror is getting more powerful as the days go on. The house wasn't too fancy, but Famine seemed to like it, and she thanked me. No problem, anything for a friend. I went out to look for some more supplies when I saw a group of skeletons near a cave entrance. I'm death, surely they won't want to harm me. As I approached, they seemed friendly, but then they started shooting me with their bows. Hey, we aren't enemies. Honestly, I didn't know anymore. I was just a baby after all. I used my sword to attack, and soon enough, they were all gone. Hey, what's that? I noticed a bow on the ground, and I picked it up. It had an enchantment of flame on it. Nice, this will come in handy. On day six to eight, while out in the forest near my base, I gathered some meat from some more cows and pigs. Famine got hungry a lot, after all. I'm gonna keep working and getting stronger. Lord Terror doesn't stand a chance against me. Is that so? I looked, and to my surprise, it was Lord Terror. He had a few zombies around him. Let those innocent souls go. You don't have a right to keep them here. Lord Terror laughed and swung the scythe around. I'm the Lord of Death now, Little Reaper. I won your scythe fair and square. What are you talking about? He seemed tired of talking, so he swung at me instead. Whoa! He was fast. I tried to dodge him, but he kept getting hits in. I beat you once. I will beat you again. I gotta get out of here. I ran as fast as my little legs could carry me. As I did, I heard Lord Terror laughing from behind me. That's right, little reaper. Run away. I will see you soon enough. On days 9 to 10, I made it back to the base. Famine could tell I was hurt, and she tried her hardest to help me. It's okay, Death. You will grow stronger and eventually beat Lord Terror. He's just a silly little monster trying to steal other people's things. I felt a little bit better after our talk, but I still felt exhausted. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a surprise for you. She brought me outside to show me a statue she was beginning to make. Ta-da! It's great, Famine! Is it a tent? No, silly. Do you really not know what it is? I looked again. Can you tell what it is? I also made some other upgrades while you were gone. She showed me the lanterns and a small archery range. Wow, you've really outdone yourself. It's the least I can do for a friend. Famine was awesome. I was glad I was able to find her. I hoped our other friends were doing okay. I would go looking for them soon. On days 11 to 12, I had a vivid dream. I was a fully grown Grim Reaper with my scythe at my side. I was living in the castle that I had escaped from on day one. Everything is as it should be. Not quite. I looked and saw Lord Terror, except he looked like a normal villager. I believe we have a game that needs playing death. 
With his dark powers, Lord Terror began to steal away my energy and my ability. He shapeshifted into his mutant wither skeleton self as I became a sad little baby reaper. Ah! I woke up in horror at the nightmare I had just had. I rushed to Famine to tell her about it. She shook her head. So that's what happened. I knew you made a deal with a dying human, but I didn't know you lost all your power in the process. That can't be it. Why am I back, but as a baby? Why can he control the dead? Famine shook her head. Maybe our friends know. I think it's about time we go find them. On days 13 to 15, I went out to explore. I was hoping to find war or pestilence, but they didn't seem to be anywhere. I hoped they weren't captured or anything. I realized I was back in the area where I had seen Famine for the first time. There were a bunch of zombies milling around still. I guess they just expected her to come back. Get lost! I drew my bow and defeated them one by one. I didn't realize it until now, but I was releasing their souls from their bodies. I was freeing them. Nice! I managed to release all their souls when I felt a power coursing through me. I grew in size and became an older Grim Reaper. I'm bigger and I have 30 hearts. I realized I could also now turn invisible for short periods. That'll come in handy. I can't wait to try this out later. On day 16 to 19, I found a cave and decided to mine for some more materials. This looks promising. Hopefully I can find some iron in here. As I was venturing deeper into the cave, I saw a group of skeletons standing right on top of an iron deposit. It looks like I'm gonna have to take care of that. I drew my bow. They noticed me immediately and began shooting. Come on guys, I just need some iron. After just a few more shots, they were all gone. Their bows and arrows scattered around me. I mined the iron without any more trouble and got to work. I smelted the iron into ingots with a furnace, then was able to make a new sword, pickaxe, and some other tools. Yes, things are looking up. On days 20 to 22, I started to head back to my base when I noticed I was being followed. I went invisible briefly and waited for them to approach. Then as the figure approached, I turned visible again and jumped out. Whoa, 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 <laughs> I'm a friend. He was a crimson wizard and the red of his outfit made me think of anger, which then made me think, are you war? In the flesh. Yeah, I thought you looked kind of different. You're uh, not as tall as you used to be. I told him what happened and he whistled. That sounds awful. Hopefully you can get your scythe and your castle back. Those are pretty sick. Thanks? No problem. I invited him back to my base and he happily agreed. And I thought my house was a fortress, you know, being war and all. But those pesky undead got inside and started breaking everything. So I left. Good thing I ran into you. We were nearly to the base when we saw Famine running toward us. Oh, hey, Famine! She didn't even acknowledge war. Death! No terror is outside. He is threatening to take down the base. Wait, war? Sheesh, it's like I'm invisible. Stay here. I'll go see what he wants. If I need help, I'll call for you. War and Famine got to catching up while I approached the entrance. Sure enough, Lord Terror was there with my scythe. I believe that scythe belongs to me. See now, little reaper. I won this fair and square. You agreed to the terms. I don't even remember what happened. And you're just a human. You can't be death. That's my calling. You're wrong. The witch gave me the ability to win this power. Witch? Lord Terror screamed and charged at me. I dodged him and used my Ice Blast ability to try to stop him. It didn't work for some reason. What in the world? He laughed and lunged at me again. I slashed him with my new iron sword. I actually managed to hit him and he looked at me in shock. I was about to hit him again when he slammed a scythe into the ground, pushing me back. I'll be back to finish you off. And with that, Lord Terror ran away. What a coward. I'll say. I looked and saw Warren Famine looking out from behind the trees. I did manage to wound him though, so that means I'm getting stronger. Yeah, but you have a lot of work to do. On days 23 to 26, I chatted with War about Lord Terror. You definitely need some upgrades if you're gonna fight Lord Terror and beat him. I can think of a few things that might be useful to you. Like what? Well, you definitely need to upgrade your sword. Iron is all right, but you need some diamonds and an enchanting table to improve your attack. Okay, where should I go? War told me all the places where I would find the supplies. It wasn't a short list. This might take a while. You want to defeat Lord Terror and get your scythe back, right? Of course I do. Then get to it. 
I started gathering materials for the enchanting table and managed to make one all by myself. Good job, Death. Thanks. If you think I'm doing a good job, be sure to join me on all my other adventures. Just search ZO, ZO. On days 27 to 31, I went to check on Famine. I hadn't seen her while I was gathering supplies, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. Hey, Famine, how are you liking your house? It's great. Look what I've been working on. He led me to the statue, which I could definitely tell was an hourglass. Wow. You've made some great progress. Yeah, well, I'm not quite there yet. I wanted to add something special on top. It's a surprise. Could you get some white and black wool for me? Sure. I made my way outside to find some sheep to bring back to the base. I found an abandoned village and spotted some sheep in pens. Perfect. As I went to collect them, I heard something approaching. A horde of zombies were coming toward me. They must have been the villagers that used to live here. You guys need to rest. And I'm so sorry Lord Terror is doing this to you. I used my weapons to release the souls from the undead. I was much more powerful and helped them all in just a few moments. Hopefully, you can all be at peace now. I gathered the sheep and managed to bring them all back to the base. It wasn't easy, but I knew that famine would appreciate it. On days 32 to 35, I went to gather some more food for all of us. Pork seemed like a pretty safe bet. I know the pigs will be easy to find, but I need to wait until dark for the zombies. I decided to set up a little trap for them, and sure enough, they fell right into it. Impressive, Death. Who is that? You don't recognize my voice? Shame on you, old friend. Then I saw someone step out from behind the mushrooms. Of course I didn't notice her. She was a mushroom lord. She blended in. Pestilence. Did you shrink? Yeah, I shrunk. I told Pestilence what had happened, and she tissed in disapproval. Now, why would you do that, Death? You are too clever to be outsmarted and depowered by some lowly wither skeleton. That's the thing. I think Lord Terror cheated me. He mentioned something about a witch. I think that he somehow won because of her. Well, the only witch I know of is Famine. Hey. I'm just kidding. I've heard of an apothecary that lives here in the swamp. Maybe that's who he went to. This is great information. Pestilence agreed to take the food back to the base while I looked for the witch. Hopefully, she could give me more information about Lord Terror. On days 36 to 39, I journeyed further into the fungal patch in search of the witch. I thought for sure that I would find her, but I didn't see a house anywhere. Where in the world is she? I looked around some more when I saw a group of rabbits. They were acting kind of strange, a little too organized. Maybe they're her henchmen or something. I should follow them. Hmm. Actually, they're probably just stocking up on food. How silly of me to think that they were working for the witch. Then I noticed that the rabbits all gathered together again. They seemed to be examining each other's food. Okay, I should maybe look somewhere else. Then the rabbits all bounded toward a large mushroom and disappeared. Whoa, where did they go? I quickly followed after them, running straight toward the mushroom. On days 40 to 43, I ran through the fungal patch chasing the rabbits. What in the world? Intruder! A large group of rabbits came bounding toward me. What are you doing in our lady's realm? Did you have an inquiry? Is this where the witch lives? The rabbits gasped. You dare call her such a rude name. She is an apothecary of great renown. Sorry, I just need answers. I don't mean her any harm. You look like you do. Then the rabbits started jumping at me. Hey! I didn't want to hurt them, so I just tried to swat them away as nicely as I could. Death? What are you doing here? I looked up to see a friendly witch. Friends, no need to harass Death. I I'm sure he has a reason for being here. The rabbit stopped attacking me and quickly surrounded the woman. Who are you? I'm Amelia. I wasn't expecting you for quite some time. I'm not here to collect your soul. I just need to know why you helped Lord Terror. Lord Terror? He stole my power and made me regenerate. He took my scythe and is using it to keep souls captive in their undead bodies. Amelia gasped and started to shake her head. <gasps> that was Logan Turner. I gave him a potion of luck. He said he needed it in order to fulfill his last dream before he passed. I had no idea he would use it for such an awful thing. She seemed genuinely upset. I can't undo what's been done, but maybe this can help you. She went inside her house and came out with a potion. What is this? A potion of strength. You will need that in order to get your scythe back. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again, but hopefully not for a long time.
She waved goodbye as I left her realm, returning to the swamp. On days 44 to 49, I returned to my base. Pestilence, famine, and war were having a good time together. I noticed they had improved their homes as well as the wall of the base. You've been busy. So have you, my friend. Did you find the witch? Apothecary, and yes, she was very nice. I told them the whole story and showed them the potion. That'll be useful later. I'm glad you were able to find her. Probably gave her quite a scare, though. Just a little bit. We all laughed and chatted for a little bit before Famine jumped up. Oh, come look at the statue. I went to look and sure enough, Famine had outdone herself. On top of the hourglass was a skull that looked just like my face. Whoa, it's amazing. You've been a great friend to us, Death. It's the least we can do. We admired the statue together for a little while longer and then went to bed. On days 50 to 53, I woke up to a loud crash. I hurried outside to see what it was, and there were zombies everywhere. I could see Lord Terror standing on the edge of the wall. Come and fight me yourself, Logan. Don't call me that. He snarled at me and then swung the scythe. It nearly knocked me over, but it also knocked out some of the undead. Time to be freed, my friends. I used my iron sword on the group of undead, freeing them from their cursed bodies. It took a little while, but I eventually got them all. You can all be at peace now. Just then, I felt a pain in my back. I grew taller and gained more hearts. I looked at my back to see what the pain was and realized that I had grown dark feathery wings. Whoa, this is amazing. I flew up for a minute to survey the damage. This is gonna take some time to fix. Death. I looked and saw famine and pestilence running toward me. I lowered myself to the ground. What's wrong? Lord Terra took war. The undead were just a distraction. No! I slumped to the ground. I thought I could protect everyone, but Lord Terra was too clever. He needed to pay. On days 54 to 57, we all worked hard to fix the base. We gathered supplies, made the walls taller, and added extra security measures, including a small moat. After working all day, we sat down to chat about our next move. There's no doubt that Lord Terra took war to the castle. Why do you say that? Oh yeah, you don't remember. There's a massive dungeon in the basement. It has cages, traps, and all sorts of things. We actually used it to meet there sometimes for brunch. Sounds lovely. It was. We should do it again soon. Yeah, cleared her throat. <clears throat> Sorry, but he'll be there for sure. There is a back entrance where we would come in. Quicker that way. Pestilence gave me directions, and I wrote them down. I needed to find our friend before Lord Terror did something awful. But first, I needed to prepare. On days 58 to 62, I went mining for more diamonds. I needed to make some better armor and weapons for myself, since I had no idea what I might face at the castle. I wasn't having any luck, and was about to go search another cave, when I saw a glimmer just up ahead. Diamonds! I walked forward, then felt something fall on me from above. It was a huge hairy spider, and he had brought some friends. I'm a friend, no need to hurt me. The spiders kept attacking, and I had no choice but to defend myself. Soon enough, they were all gone. Now, on to the diamonds. The deposit was actually really large, and I managed to make armor, plus a new sword and a pickaxe. Sweet! I felt just a little bit more ready to go save war. On days 63 to 66, I noticed that part of the statue had been damaged during the fight. I didn't want to finish it without war, so I just admired it with all its burns and marks. I'll save you, war. I promise. Hello, Mr. Death, sir. I looked and saw some of Amelia's rabbit friends gathering around me. You aren't going to jump on me again, are you? No, sir, we need your help. Amelia has been captured by that Lord Terror Man. We don't have the strength to get her back. Did you get her back? The rabbits looked very concerned. Of course, he has my friend too. He's probably keeping them in the same place. Oh, thank you, Mr. Death, sir. I'll be back soon. In the meantime, you can wait here with my friends. They can help you. They agreed to stay while I rescued Amelia. This was going to be a little bit more difficult, but I was determined. And hey, if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe. We love having you here with us. On days 67 to 70, I followed the directions to the back door entrance of the dungeon. It was hiding behind some trees and bushes. Good job me for thinking ahead. I entered quietly and made my way down, down, down. I didn't hear much for a while, so I thought I was in the clear. What was that? I turned a corner and saw a swarm of zombies blocking the hallway. 
They saw me and started ambling toward me. Get back! I used my wings to fly over them. I fired my ice blast at them from the air, freezing them solid. Peace, friends. I lowered myself in front of a door and opened it carefully. Death! It's about time you showed up. War and Amelia were stuck in cages, and I quickly broke the bars to free them. How did you know I was here? Your loyal little friends told me. They really are the best, aren't they? Sure are. Let's get out of here. On days 71 to 74, we made our way back up toward the back door. Then I noticed a lever I hadn't seen before. It was hiding behind a pillar. I wonder what this opens. Is that a wise idea? It was my house. I'm sure it'll be fine. I released the lever and the trap door opened. I went inside and saw a chest in a small room. <gasps> There's a chest. Well, what are you waiting for? Open it. I opened it, and inside were netherite ingots, gold, diamonds, and some other ingredients for enchanting. Wow! I climbed back up and showed war. Hey, you can finally make that sword we've been talking about. Right! We continued out, following the stream of daylight. On days 75 to 78, we finally made it out. Thank goodness. I was beginning to think that Lord Terror would hold us there forever. Not so fast. Lord Terror came around the corner, scythe in hand. You dare take my witch and my strongest soldier? I am not a witch. Then I would never fight for you. We brandished our weapons as Lord Terror snarled. Why won't you just die? He swung the scythe, but I managed to dodge. I then swung my sword and hit Lord Terror. He stepped back, then swung again. He was fast, but I was an equal opponent now. I could sense his fear. No, 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 no! He slammed the hilt of the scythe into the ground and blasted us back. Somehow, through some dark magic, he stole my potion of strength and drank it! On day 79 to 84, we all watched in horror as Lord Terror grew and grew and grew! He was enormous! Oh no! We need to go! Lord Terror laughed as I picked up my friends and flew away with them. This has to end soon, or Lord Terror is going to take over everything. On days 85 to 89, we arrived safely back at my base. Famine and Pestilence came running out to greet us. Okay, you better not cry, because I'm not good at dealing with emotion. Amelia saw her rabbits, and they all jumped for joy. It seemed like things were at least a little normal for now. Death, come, we need to fix that sword of yours. War took me to upgrade my sword and then showed me how to enchant it. Wow, this will really help, War. Thanks for everything you've done. Hey, I love conflict, but not when it involves my friends. It's the fire aspect enchantment. It'll give your sword a burning edge. This will help you to get your scythe back. How? Lord Terror doesn't always have the scythe with him. He likes to hang it up in the main corridor and just admire it. I heard him talking about it while we were captured. This is great information, War. If you can fight him off long enough to get the scythe back, that'll be the key to stopping Lord Terror for good. I agreed and went to show my friends. They ooed and awed before Famine spoke up. Come and see what Pestilence and I did with the help of the rabbits. They took me over to the statue, which now had wildflowers growing all around the base. On top was the skull, now with flowers and a touch of flames. Guys, this looks awesome. You are the Lord of Death, but we know you have a soft side. I do like flowers. I stared at it in awe. I really did have amazing friends. On days 90 to 94, I traveled back to the castle to retrieve my scythe. If I did it while Lord Terror was unaware, surely I would be able to defeat him. As I approached the castle, I decided to just hide next to one of the pillars inside the throne room and stake it out. I could see Lord Terror back to his normal size. Thank goodness, he was standing around, admiring the scythe. That's mine. I waited for a long time before he fell asleep. I quietly opened the door and snuck past him, grabbing the scythe from the wall. I expected to grow into my full form, but something was wrong. Intruder! Lord Terror started to charge at me. I brandished my new sword and smacked him backwards. He brought out another potion and drank it before charging at me. He was incredibly fast and I could barely see him as he struck me. Oh no! My hearts were fading fast since I couldn't defend myself. I ran away, taking the scythe with me. It won't work for you, little reaper. You are too late. I didn't know what he meant, but I flew away before he had a chance to attack me again. I need to fix whatever he did to my scythe. 
Otherwise, I'm dead meat! On days 95 to 97, I brought my scythe back to the base and had War examine it! I don't know what to tell you. It looks normal to me. Maybe Amelia will know. I took it to her and she examined it. This is my fault. Lord Terror forced me to make a binding spell. He is now bound to the scythe by an enchantment. How do I break it? I'll have to make a counter spell, but it will probably take a few days. We might even break it. Do it. She worked tirelessly trying to fix the scythe, and I did what I could to assist her. I really need this to work. On day 98, I helped Amelia with what I could, but she said I needed to wait for the result. I made my way outside and admired our base and the statue. It had been a difficult journey so far, but I was glad that I had found my friends, made some new ones, and grown stronger. Even if my scythe didn't work, I knew that I would defeat Lord Terror somehow. Hey, we're really glad that you've been here on this journey too. Be sure to subscribe and search for ZOZO for more videos. Also, comment below on what my next adventure should be. I can't wait to see what you say. On day 99, I went to look for Amelia. She looked a little discouraged. I don't know if the spell worked. You'll need to wield it in battle to see. Well, then I guess it's time to go fight Lord Terror. I'm sorry about all the trouble I've caused. If it wasn't for me, none of this would have happened. Maybe, but I'm glad it did. I got to find my old friends again, build an awesome base, and meet you. You're an awesome apothecary, Amelia. Which? But who's keeping track? Go give him, well, you know. I smiled as I flew off towards the castle, scythe in hand. As I landed on the steps, the door was open for me. The undead were nowhere to be seen, but Lord Terror stood on the steps, sword in hand, potion in the other. You can't defeat me. We'll see about that. I took my scythe and slammed the hilt into the ground, causing everything to shake. I felt a surge of power, and I was connected to my weapon again. I grew taller, my hearts increased, and my wings spanned further. You have cheated death, Logan Turner, and for that, you must pay. Lord Terror drank a potion, and he grew taller. As our weapons met, there was a brilliant burst of light. It's not fair. I am Lord Terror, the new Grim Reaper. I earned that title. I lifted myself into the air, letting the scythe swing down with a mighty force. You stole that title. I am the rightful Grim Reaper, and now you must move on. Lord Terror screamed before the scythe made contact, and in a burst of smoke, he was gone. On day 100, I flew back to the base triumphant and glorious in my final form. Everyone cheered as I descended, and they even tried to hug me. You're our hero. The world is finally right again. And that was the honest truth. On day one, I spawned in as a fire witherstorm, a force of pure fiery destruction. Why am I so puny? I only had six hearts to begin with, but I knew witherstorms grew stronger by absorbing blocks and mobs. I tried to absorb some of the nearby blocks and grow bigger, but it didn't work. Maybe I needed to unlock that ability first. It also looked like I couldn't really fly yet. At least I'm immune to fire. The area I spawned into was a molten lava field that would be really dangerous for regular mobs. It was like home sweet home, but there was nothing to destroy. I didn't see any other wither storms either, so I figured I had been left behind by the others while they went off to grow bigger. Wait for me, guys! I ran around looking for my friends until I saw something really strange. There was a snowy biome right next to this fire one. What's the deal? Everyone knows that fire and ice don't mix. I heard a growl behind me and saw a fire Cerberus looking really hungrily at me. Hey, Witherstorms aren't nutritious. I hit the Cerberus, but because I was so small, the damage was nothing. I was losing hearts fast to its bite, so I decided to run away. I ended up running straight into a Vex that wanted a piece of me too. All of a sudden, Fireland doesn't feel that much like home. I jumped down into a lava pit and hid myself away. I knew they couldn't follow me because of my fire immunity, so I stayed there safely until the next day. On day two, I hopped out of the lava pit and found some burnt out trees. It wasn't what I was expecting, but at least I could gather some wood to make my first tools. I've never seen a wither make anything before, but it's nice to be the first at something. These tools would probably burn up if I used them here, so I made my way towards that snowy biome that I saw the other day. On the border between the fire and ice biomes, there was a wide river with a strong current. If I try to cross that, I'll be put out like a campfire. 
I didn't have enough wood to build a bridge, so I followed the banks of the river to see if there was a place where it was safe to cross. That's when I noticed something small flying towards me from across the river. Huh? It was an imp with icy wings. Do not cross this river. I'm warning you, Fireface. That's rude. First of all, my name is Zozo. Second, why do you care if I cross it? It's not me who cares. The Ice Meister is the one who doesn't want anyone from the Firelands coming over here. I'm a Witherstorm first and a Fire Creature second. I'll go where I want. My warning still stands. There's a war going on and Ice Meister plans on winning it. A war between the creatures of ice and fire? That sounds heated and chilling. Steer clear of it, Fireface. I mean, Zozo. Thanks. I finished the day by mining some stone blocks from the side of the river with my new set of tools. On day three, I started building a base on my side of the river with some stone blocks as the foundation. Whoever this Ice Meister guy is, he can't be mad at me if I don't leave the Firelands. I was still really weak for a fire witherstorm and needed something to protect me from all the wandering mobs until I could unleash my full potential. I was betting that the mobs could sense my true potential and that's why they were attacking me. Almost done putting up the walls, I'll be safe now. It turned out I spoke too soon because a dread beast ran inside the base and started trying to infect me with its plagues. Uh -oh. I pulled out my wooden sword and swung away at the mob. The wooden sword caught on fire as soon as I started using it. It felt good to be the one attacking for a change, probably because I hadn't gotten to do any actual destroying yet. With the final blow, the wooden sword got destroyed, but I downed the beast. Bye bye, beastie. Hey, I wonder if I can use my absorb ability on it now. Come on, let's go! Absorb! The ability actually worked this time. The dread beast and a bunch of the surrounding blocks got added into my body. I had gotten way bigger, and my total number of hearts was 14 now. I had three tentacles now instead of none. I could make three times as many melee attacks now. The only downside was that absorbing more material into myself made part of my base disappear. I better be careful what I absorb in the future. I replaced the blocks that got absorbed and made sure to finish the foundation and replaced my broken wooden sword with a new stone one. This one should last longer now. I plan to go and gather more stone tomorrow. On days four to five, I went looking for more stone by the riverside. This time, I noticed that part of the river was frozen solid, like somebody had built a bridge of ice blocks over the running water. Wow. If I tried to walk on it, the ice would melt. But something told me the ice and snow bobs wouldn't have the same problem. I was right. There was already a taiga zombie on the fire side of the river. How many times does the Ice Meister need to teach a lesson? Hey, I've stayed on my side. Why can't Ice Master stay on his? It seems you don't remember what you used to be. Huh? What did I used to be? You were the Ice Meister's greatest rival, the leader of all the fire mobs in this world. You almost melted all of the snow zone before he defeated you. Whoa, I used to be the ruler of the fire side of the river? That's really cool. What happened that made me so small and weak? That's not your business anymore. I'll destroy you before you become that powerful ever again. The taiga zombie clearly wanted a fight, so I made sure to give it one. The zombie had only one weapon, and I had three tentacles and a stone sword, so he was quickly outmatched. I won! Now I'll absorb you, too! The absorption didn't work this time, which probably meant that the ice mobs were totally immune. That was disappointing, but important to know. I finished off the zombie and gathered as much of the stone as I could before my wooden pickaxe broke. I went back to my base with the stone I gathered. If there really is a war, I need to get fortified. On day six to eight, I found some lost tentacles lying around in the Firelands. Wow. I wonder if these used to be mine when I was big and strong. The mysteries grow deeper. I couldn't attach them back onto myself, but I did know of another way to put them to good use. First, I had to gather sticks from around the burnt trees. Next, I upgraded my wooden tools to stone. This let me mine for a couple ingots of iron and gold beneath the Firelands. With access to both sticks, gold, and iron, I was able to craft a hook. Then, I combined the lost tentacles with my hook in order to make a tentacle grab. This special item would let me grapple enemies and keep them from getting away. It would be perfect for keeping mobs within melee range. Not long after I crafted the tentacle grab, I noticed a few ice mobs on this side of the river. They were ice piglins and they were not happy to see me. Get out of here. Go tell Ice Meister that I survived and I'm going to become big and strong again. They started moving towards me. Time to test out my new weapon. I quickly struck down the first mob, and then the second. I then snared the ice piglin with a tentacle grab and pulled him in for a tentacle beatdown. Bet you weren't expecting that. Those old lost tentacles were good for something after all. The piglin was defeated. Ice Meister would have to do better than that if he wanted to eliminate me for good. 
and next I was going to strike back. It was time to see what this snowy biome was all about. On days 9 to 10, I gathered as much stone as I could find and built a sturdy bridge over the river. Now I can cross over to Ice Master's side of the river and see what I'm up against. The snowy biome had tons of materials that I had never seen on the fiery side of the river. There were blocks of lapis and the polar bears dropped some pelts, which I used for decoration on my base. I continued through the tundra, seeing all sorts of wonderful things along the way. This was a nice area. It would be a shame if I had to burn it all down. That's when I saw him. Ice Meister. Memories of the last time we fought came flooding back to me. I was a lot bigger than I am right now when I lost to him, but it seemed like he used some kind of enchantment on me. I had to find out more. I approached Ice Meister confidently. Remember me? It can't be. You're the Fire Witherstorm from across the river. That's right, and you're going to stop sending ice mobs into the Firelands or we're going to have a problem. <laughs> Pathetic little puff of smoke. I'll let you live just this once, but only because I've already sealed your power away. I didn't know what he meant, but I had the feeling he wouldn't be so understanding if I stuck around. I turned back towards the river so that I could make my way home. When I got to the stone bridge, I noticed a brown bear halfway over the bridge. Oh, hey, don't mind me. Please, don't tell me you're another ice mob invading my territory. Me? Not at all. I'm trying to get somewhere warmer. Are you from the Firelands? Actually, I used to be top dog over there. I am Zozo the Fire Witherstorm. I'm Reginald. All the other bears like the cold, but I'd rather be in a nicer climate. Everywhere Ice Master goes, he freezes the terrain and starts building cities made out of ice. Well then you'll be right at home in the Firelands. It'll always be warm there. On days 11 to 12, Reginald and I returned to my base on the fire side of the river. I soon made an extra room for him with a sunroof so he could get the most out of the pleasant weather. After that, I went to mine for more iron with my stone pickaxe. Because of all the lava, the Firelands were rich in obsidian, which I could gather later. It's a sturdy material that would make my base stronger. But before I could get enough ingots, I was ambushed by a wildkin. It did a ton of damage with a single attack. Ow, my heart! I couldn't get any further into the iron mine with that mob down there, so I ran back above ground. I have to unlock more of my former abilities. What else do other storms do? I concentrated as hard as I could on one of the nearby magma cubes. With some effort, I was able to fire a Wither Skull projectile. The mob was destroyed in one hit. Wither Skulls, that's it. The Wildkin would take more than a few Wither Skull attacks to be defeated, but I could at least weaken it before it got close. I went back down into the iron mine and put my plan into action. The Wildkin was waiting for me, so I wasted no time blasting him with three Wither Skulls. Now I could fight at close range without worrying about getting worn out. The Wildkin's claws were still doing damage to me, but I had three tentacles, so my attacks were much faster. Once I beat him, I crafted an iron pickaxe and mined the obsidian from the surface of the Firelands. This obsidian will look great on my base! I was right, the obsidian made a perfect addition to the outer walls. My base was becoming a real fortress. On days 13 to 15, I started to remember more of what happened back when I was a fully grown fire witherstorm. I was huge and absorbing everything in sight. I remember the terrain being covered in ice, but unlike the snowy biome next door, it was the middle of the ocean. I must have been able to fly here from the Firelands. Down below, I saw Ice Meister. He was slightly smaller than the present day, so this must have been his younger self. <laughs> You're not so tough. Move aside, Pipsqueak. I won't let you destroy my home. He sounded really upset, and from the look of things, it seemed like I was the one who had attacked first. I saw Ice Meister hold a black block, and it began absorbing me. No, impossible! My destructive power! Your true form is sealed now. It will never escape this enchanted block. I fell down to the ground, a tiny and weak version of what I used to be. I'll be back one day! Ice Meister called some other snowmen to put me on a block of ice, which floated away from this land and down the river to the Firelands. Back then, the Firelands were on both sides of the river. The dream ended there. It seemed like Ice Meister just wanted revenge because of what I did, but he showed mercy to me the last time I was there in spite of that. I can't believe I used to be the bad guy. I should just leave the ice mobs alone from now on. That might be the only way to make up for all the destruction I caused when I was big. On days 16 to 19, I decided to tell Reginald about the memories I was having. I felt really bad about what I did, so I needed to talk to a friend. I thought Ice Meister was the bad guy, but it turns out I made him that way because I bullied him and melted his home. That is a lot. Have you thought of saying sorry and trying to do something nice for him? I might have messed up too badly for that. 
There's no way to undestroy something. Being sad about it won't fix the problem, neither. Ah, you wouldn't get it. I ran away from the base, leaving Reginald behind. He was better off without me anyway. I was a destructive bad guy, and he was just a regular bear. How could he understand what I was feeling right now? While I was out wandering the Firelands, I saw a village under attack by taiga zombies. Oh no, I have to help! Without even thinking, I raced to the aid of the villagers. The zombies were easier to defeat this time, now that I was bigger and I could clear out several at once. The villagers cheered as I drove the last of the ice mobs off. Their home was saved, and I actually felt good. The Firelands were attacked because of me, but I'm going to save them anyway. I can't change the past, but I will stop this war and save my home. Thank you, Zozo. We were hoping someone would protect our village from the ice mobs, but we never expected you would return to save us. I'm back, and better than ever. The villagers brought a large stack of blocks out of their houses and set them down in front of me. We were storing these blocks for you to absorb, so you could become strong again. You're not afraid of my true form? No way! You were always nice to us fire mobs, and with you around, nobody messed with us. Go on, absorb those blocks. I did what the villager said and became an even larger fire wither storm. My total number of tentacles was five, and I had three heads now. Hi, hello. My armor and hearts were both increased too, with iron level durability and 25 hearts. I was really starting to resemble my old self. In a good way, I hoped. Do you villagers know anything more about how I used to be? We do know one thing. The legendary block that contained your true form was hidden away by Ice Master after he defeated you the first time. If you can find that, you'll be back to full power in no time. Full power? I like the sound of that. Even though taking my old form could make me a bad guy again, I decided to find the sealed block anyway. If I'm going to end this war, I may as well be prepared to do whatever it takes. On days 20 to 22, I went back to the base so I could apologize to Reginald for running away. I found him outside the base, fending off some polar bears. It's over, Reginald. You're coming home with us. No, this is my friend's base, and I'm protecting it until he comes back. You're a fool. We were right to kick you out of the polar bear club. I ran over to help. Reginald, I'm back. I'm so sorry I yelled at you. Oh, it's the firestorm. Retreat. The polar bears ran away in fear in the sight of me. Thank you, Zozo. I'm glad you came back. What are friends for? Now that the base was safe from the ice mobs, I started laying the foundation for a statue. I would need a lot of obsidian, so I got to mining as much as I could. With my pickaxe, I diverted part of the river into the Firelands to create even more obsidian where the lava was flowing freely. This also let me improve the base with a moat that even the ice mobs would have trouble crossing. I made sure to give it a drawbridge, and I filled it with lava. That should be enough obsidian to get started. What do you think I'm building? Also, subscribe to Zozo if you want to see more of my adventures. On days 23 to 26, the base was attacked by more ice mobs. Those polar bears who bullied Reginald must have told Ice Master where I was. There was a whole pack of frost stalkers trying to get in. They were some strong mammoths, but fortunately, they weren't the kind that were clever enough to open doors. Thanks to the blocks I absorbed in the village, I was big and strong enough to give them a real thrashing. The last one to be defeated dropped their pelt, which I used to craft a frost stalker cloak. With this, I could disguise myself as a frost stalker and infiltrate the snowy biomes. Wow. I traveled over the stone bridge and into the cold forest where the frost stalkers lived. The cloak's disguise worked like a charm. I could tame the frost stalkers and have them keep other mobs out of the forest. The trees here were made of spruce wood, which couldn't be found in the Firelands. I should take some home with me since I'm here. I would have stayed longer, but I was worried about being discovered by the Ice Meister. I went back to the base and built myself a fireplace that would put the spruce wood to good use. When I went back outside, I saw a fire elemental hanging outside the walls of the base. Excuse me, is this where the resistance is? Resistance? You know, the resistance against Ice Meister and his army of ruthless conquerors. Some villagers told me that the Fire Witherstorm was coming back. Is that you? Yep, that's me. Oh wow, I'm your biggest fan. I wanted to join up with you and help save our home. You're a fan of me? Wow, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I'll let you in. It's safer inside of the base. Sweet! I added a room made completely out of obsidian to the base for the fire elemental to live inside. On days 27 to 31, I had another vision, but this time it wasn't from the past, but from the present. I could feel my sealed destructive power calling out for me from inside the enchanted block. It seemed like it had been locked away inside of some kind of underground vault. I didn't get to see the outside of the chamber, but my best guess was that the entrance was somewhere in the snowy biome. 
I went to the stone bridge in order to cross, but saw that it had been destroyed while I was away. That must have been the Ice Meister's doing. It looked like the mob who did it was still there. A ferocious yeti that was bigger and badder than any ice creature I had faced yet. It snarled and charged at me. You may have wrecked my bridge, but I'm a lot tougher. I launched a wither skull at him before hitting him with the tentacle grab. The yeti attacks were strong, but so were mine. After fighting the big lug for a bit, I let go of the grapple and pushed him into the river. The fast-moving current washed him far away. I jumped over the gaps of the bridge and made it to the other side. On days 32 to 35, I came across a village of icemen. They'll probably attack me if they find out who I really am. I'd better blend in. I used the Frostwalker cloak in hopes that they'd think I was just a mammoth passing through. It didn't really work. Eh, it's the leader of the fire mobs! Darn it, there goes that plan. What do you want with us? Don't be afraid, I'm not a bad guy anymore. I just want my powers to be unsealed. Do you know where the Ice Meister is keeping the block? I can tell you that it's not anywhere in the Snowlands. Ice Meister didn't want you to invade us looking for it. I'm not invading, I swear. Like we'd believe you. It wasn't on this side of the river. That was bad news on its own. Uh -oh. It was even worse because the villagers were really scared of me. I figured I might as well leave, and then Ice Meister showed up. What's this, Iceman? Are you seriously being friends with a fire mob? That's not cool. No, Ice Meister. It's the leader. The fire witherstorm you sealed away. That's even worse. I should have you all frozen for this betrayal. Hey, don't blame them. I'm the one you want. And you. I told you I'd only spare you once. Then come and get me. Ice Meister started chasing me, so I ran away from the Iceman village back to the river. Thinking quickly, I took a risk and jumped in. The water would deal damage to me, but I had enough hearts to withstand it now. Yes. I had gotten away from the Ice Meister, but the current took me for a ride. That was until I hit an ice bridge further down the river and was able to swim back to shore. It was the Iceman. They had come to save me. Thank you for distracting Ice Meister. He's gotten really angry lately, and he's obsessed with war. You protected us, so I guess we misjudged fire mobs. No sweat. Come on, follow me back to the base. On days 36 to 39, I made some big changes to the base so the Icemen who were staying here wouldn't be too uncomfortable with the heat. I carefully made a big pool filled with water for them to cool wow. off. You can never have enough water fun. Er, well, I can, but you guys have a good time. You got that right. Now that you're all here, why don't you tell me more about that block that contains my true form? Icemeister said he hid it in a place that is neither fiery or icy. A pasture with a balanced climate and huge fields of crops. It sounds like there wouldn't be any war happening there. Yeah, wherever it is. After talking to the Iceman, I did some more work on my statue. I've moved past the foundation and it's starting to take shape. Do you know what it could be? On days 40 to 43, the base was visited by a friendly dragonfly. Salutations! I've heard that you're trying to take the fight to the Icemeister. You heard correctly. All right, it just so happens that I know about a way to upgrade your Wither Skulls. Oh, tell me, tell me! There's an ice mob outpost upriver from here where they're keeping the power up, which will turn your Wither Skulls to blue Wither Skulls. It's guarded by a goat centaur archer, so be careful. I followed the dragonfly's advice and went to the outpost. As soon as I got there, the archer started opening fire. I avoided the arrows and struck back with my Wither Skulls. Kablam! I'm a pretty good shot. Inside the outpost was the blue wither skull power-up. I absorbed it, and my projectile attacks became twice as strong. These blue ones do serious damage. I felt the call of my sealed self further upriver, so I decided to trust that feeling and keep going. On days 44 to 49, I was astounded by how beautiful the biome around me was. There were crops growing everywhere, and the grass was lush and green. So this is what the world would look like if fire and ice weren't fighting? There were still dangers out here. A whole pack of coyotes tried to eat me, but I was too spicy. That's a fire joke. The coyotes turned away from me and ran back into the field of crops. I saw them a couple seconds later chasing a poor scarecrow. Help! Help! If only I had a way out of this mess! Hang on! I'm coming! I ran in and smacked the coyotes with my sword, scaring them off. Why were they chasing you? I thought coyotes ate meat. They're vegetarian coyotes, and most of my body is made out of vegetables. Oh, glad I could help. I'm Straw Bastion. Feel free to make yourself at home. There are plenty of crops here, all nourished by the magical power source we keep underground. This magical power source wouldn't happen to look like a black block, would it? Oh, I've never seen it personally. 
All I know is that it has a great fiery power, which can keep the ground nice for cultivating crops. That has to be my sealed form. On days 50 to 53, I followed Straw Bastion as he showed me around his peaceful land. I was keen to get my hands on my true form, but I didn't want to scare him since he seemed like a nice guy. Has this place always been so peaceful? There isn't any great war, if that's what you're asking. But we do have our own problems. Huh? Like what? Look around. All this delicious food and nobody to eat it. Every season, so much of it goes bad because the people in the surrounding lands don't come to visit. Well, I'll make sure that changes. That reminds me, there's another traveler here. Oh, how nice. Do I know them? Turns out I did. The Yeti who broke my bridge jumped out and attacked me. He must have swam all the way back up. Let's finish what we started. I grappled him and we began to fight. Straw Bastion got scared, so he ran away. I wanted to go check on him, but I had to teach this Yeti a lesson first. Don't break people's stuff. I hit him with my wither skull and the Yeti was no more. After the fight, I looked around for Straw Bastion but couldn't find him. I guess I'll come back later. I was walking home when I ran into another vegetable person. This one had a tomato for a head. Wait, are tomatoes fruits or vegetables? What's it to ya? Sorry, I'm just looking for the legendary enchanted block. How do you get to it? You gotta dig for it, but you'll need better tools than that. There's a garden shed nearby with a strong shovel you can use. I took the tomato man's advice and found a diamond shovel inside of a nearby abandoned shed. The shed was too small for me, so I used my tentacle to pull the shovel towards me without damaging the shack. On days 54 to 57, I told everyone at the base about the peaceful fields upstream. All the fire and ice villagers were excited about all the food there and wanted to visit. To make the journey easier, I made rowboats out of the spruce wood. While I was working, Reginald came outside to join me. He said he wanted to ask me something. What is it, buddy? I wanted to mention something about this place with all the vegetables. Doesn't it sound amazing? It does, for everybody else. Huh? But bears don't eat greens. We prefer fish, and lots of it. Oh, I get what you're saying. You want me to rustle up a source of fish so that you can have your favorite food too. Yeah, as long as it's not too much to ask. You've got nothing to worry about, my friend. I decided to go fishing, but not with nets or fishing poles. I dug a gigantic hole in the ground. It was big enough to be a pond. Just add water. Reginald would have all the fish he needed right here at the base. Thank you so much. Here's a weapon I think you could use. Like you, it's a destroyer. Wow. Reginald handed me a powerful breaking weapon. My excavations would be a lot easier with that bad boy in my arms. Yes. On days 58 to 62, the statue was really starting to come together. You could almost guess what it was going to be. A new wave of ice mobs suddenly broke through the base's defenses. There were ice piglins, frost stalkers, and even new enemies I hadn't seen before. Who let them in? Zozo, help! I saw Reginald being attacked by those polar bears again. Thinking quickly, I put on my Frost Stalker helmet and sent some of the Frost Stalkers to deal with them. Reginald and I ran away to another part of the base together. When we were there, we saw that the fire villagers and icemen were fighting. Hey, break it up! What's going on here? I knew we couldn't trust the people of the Snowlands. You're the ones who couldn't accept us. Enough! I shouted loudly and got everyone's attention. I probably scared them, but at least they stopped fighting. Stay here and don't hurt each other. I'll go deal with the enemies outside. Reginald, you're in charge. Yes, sir. I left Reginald and the villagers in the safe place behind my house and fought back the ice mobs single-handedly. There was one friend I hadn't seen in there and I was becoming worried. Come on, Fire Elemental, where are you? I discovered him at the drawbridge, surrounded by ice mobs. They had already depleted most of his health by the time I got there. I wanted to do something, but it was too late. Sorry, Zozo. I thought we could win, so I called for a battle. It's okay. I'm here now. We'll win. Oh, good. You can do it, Zozo. With that, the fire elemental faded away. He had been so brave, and unlike me, he wasn't coming back from this. This was Ice Meister's fault. He was going to pay. On day 63 to 66, I went to the Snowlands and tried to convince the local creatures to stop the war. This battle is between Ice Meister and myself. None of you need to get involved. If you don't want to fight me, there is a place at the top of the river with plenty of food and no war. If you stay here, Ice Meister will force you to invade the Firelands. A few of them seemed to listen and started heading upstream. But one ran out of the crowd of snow creatures and attacked me. For Ice Meister, I will defeat you. You cannot be allowed to reclaim your true form. 
He was strong, so I had to fight back. At least I wasn't picking on the weaker ones. Stop it! More fighting is not the solution! It's too late! You already melted our home once, and most of the world too! How do you think the Firelands ended up burned and destroyed? I did that? Yes! You are the Fire Witherstorm! You are the true evil in this world! Please! I'm going to be nicer! You don't have to do this! He wouldn't listen! I had no other choice! I defeated him with a blue Wither Skull attack! The other ice creatures ran away! I'm sorry! On days 67 to 70, I caught up with some of the other ice mobs that had gone to the crop field. At least they are safe. I saw some ruins in the distance and went to check them out. With the destroyer, I started to dig into the earth until I came upon a vault made of bedrock. Wow. Even the destroyer couldn't get through this, probably because of enchantments. I dug around more and found an entrance, but it was guarded. Somehow, this guardian seemed familiar. I was wondering when you'd show up. Who are you? And why do I feel like I know you? That's when I received another memory of the past. I saw myself as a fire witherstorm raging across the land. I saw everything on both sides of the river get turned to ash and lava. By my side the whole time was my loyal pack of Cerberus mobs and their leader, Tartarus. The same Tartarus that was standing in front of me, guarding the entrance to the vault. Tartarus? You remember now? I don't understand. Why are you guarding the vault, buddy? My true form is inside of there, and I need it to defeat Icemeister. The only thing you need is to return home and give up on this quest for the legendary block. I can't do that. People have gotten hurt because of this war. People have gotten hurt because of you too. I'm here to stop you from becoming your worst self again. Even if that means Ice Meister becomes my worst self instead? Yes, even if that happens. Then I'm sorry for what I have to do. As Tartarus and I began to fight, all of his special attacks started to come back to me. I avoided his breath weapon and his breaking claw strikes. I pelted him with wither skulls until we clashed head to head. You were really strong, old friend. Sorry again. I drew the destroyer and swung it at him, but he dodged and ran away. Rather than chase after him, I checked the vault for my sealed form. On day 71 to 74, I entered the room that had haunted my dreams. This was definitely where the block that held my true form had been. I said, had been, because it wasn't there now. Someone had taken it. I felt its call again from far away and realized immediately what had happened. Tartarus must have been keeping the block in his own inventory. He was really determined to keep me from returning to my full self. He's probably on his way to Ice Meister right now to hide the block again. I didn't want to have to fight Tartarus again, but if he was with Ice Meister, the two of them would be unbeatable at my current level. Dejected, I left the empty vault behind. On days 75 to 78, I asked the Froststalkers I had recruited during the ice mob attack what they eat. Like Reginald, the Froststalkers ate fish too, so I used the destroyer to make the pond bigger. All of them will have enough to eat now. You've really made this place feel like home for me. Have this, I think it'll help. Reginald gave me a book with an enchantment that could make me take no extra damage from water. Thanks, Reg. This will come in handy next time I cross the river. You're welcome, pal. Well, aren't we awfully buddy-buddy? Oh no, Tartarus! Seems like you have a new best friend. I should have known you'd leave me behind. Tartarus, where is my true form? Doesn't matter. You're not yourself anymore. I'm going to end this bitter memory once and for all. He lunged forward. I drew the destroyer. Run, Reginald! Be careful, Zozo! The second battle between me and Tartarus began. I could still sense his moves, but he was fighting like I'd never seen him fight before. It took everything I had to keep on fighting until I struck him down at last. That was a good hit. You weren't totally different after all. Tartarus, why? Listen closely, because I only have time to say this once. I brought Ice Meister the legendary block, and he probably still has it. That means I can get it back from him. Yes, but pay attention. That sealed block has had its destructive energy reversed through enchantments. That's why all the plants grew so beautifully in that field above. They are all going to wilt away if you don't put it back. But what about me? My power! Looks like you'll have to make a difficult decision. I wish you luck. Tartarus! Tartarus! Hey, I'll still be there for you. Just absorb me and I can help. Okay, I absorbed Tartarus and grew even larger. I was close to a full-size Witherstorm now. I had 60 hearts and diamond-level durability. Thanks, buddy. I'll never forget my oldest friend. On day 79 to 84, I crossed the river without the bridge because I was too big to get swept up in the current. I took the forest route, saying hello to my friends the Froststalkers along the way. Hello! 
Oh, hey there. Huh? The voice came out of a nearby tree. Or should I say, treant. Wow. Whoa, I didn't see you there. Didn't mean to sneak up on ya. I'm the gardener of the field, and I've come to give this ice meister fella a stern how do you do. How do you do? Doing quite well, thank you. Yourself? I'm actually looking for ice meister too. Believe it or not, we might be after the same item. You mean the legendary power source that nourishes our crops? Yep, I used to want to have it for a different reason, but I've decided it belongs in that vault where it can help people. I like your thinking. You're not as mean and evil and scary as you look. Thanks, I guess. I traveled together with the gardener until we saw a formidable fortress of snow and ice on the horizon. I suppose that must be Ice Meister's place. I would keep walking, but I'm pretty tired. You could say I'm bushed. Same, and I have a feeling that he's not going to make this easy for us to get the block back. How about we return to my base for now and discuss strategy? I like where your head's at, all three of them. On days 85 to 89, I told the gardener of the field everything about my journey so far, including how I used to be a bad guy when I was the ruler of the Firelands and how I was trying to stop the war. Sounds to me like you've seen and done a lot of things since you first spawned into this world so long ago. Changing into a better person from who you were in the past isn't easy, but that's what growing up is all about. If only I could make Ice Meister understand that. I don't think he'll ever forgive me, and that makes me sad. Well, to be honest with you, Ice Meister and you might never be friends, but there's a lesson in that. You are a being of pure destruction who brings fire down upon the world, while Ice Meister creates snowy landscapes and gives a sense of urgency to all the creatures he meets. You two are polar opposites, and this world needs both of you. Okay, I sorta understand, but how do I stop him from creating war? I just want the mobs to live in peace. I'll let you in on a little secret, Zozo. I was the one who enchanted that block. Huh? Wait, you helped seal my powers? Yes, and look how it turned out. Don't you feel free now? I do, actually. Well, there is your answer. Together, we will free Ice Meister from his ambitions, and the war will come to an end. I'll enchant a new sealing block, but you'll need to gather the raw materials. Done. On days 90 to 94, I searched high and low for as many emeralds as I could find. After that, I traveled to every village on both sides of the river that would let me in. Sorry, sorry, I know I'm scary. Little by little, news spread across the land that I only wanted to trade emeralds for bottles of enchanting. They started treating me like a regular guy, which I really appreciated, even though I was too big to get inside the villages. Throughout my travels, I gathered a whole bunch of bottles of enchantment and returned to the gardener. These will do. Give me a few days and I'll have the seal ready. Awesome! With some of the leftover enchantment bottles, I decided to give myself the fire aspect enchantment. It worked! My wither skulls had turned red and could now catch any enemy that they hit on fire. On days 95 to 97, I completed the statue. It had been a statue of TARDIS all along. I didn't even know that when I started building it, but I guess there are some things you never forget no matter how much you change. My oldest and most loyal friend would now be remembered as a beautiful statue for all to see. And every time I saw the statue, I would remember him. You've done all right, Zozo. Thank you for remembering me. Tartarus? Yep, it's me. I heard his voice inside of my head. Okay, this is kind of really weird. Don't worry, I won't be doing this all the time. Just wanted to tell you that I'm proud you chose to put the legendary block back where it truly belongs. Well, some things are more important than getting back something you lost, or even being the most powerful fire witherstorm in the world. You'll always be number one in my book. Thanks, Tardis. On day 98, I told the villagers that they could all go home if they wanted to, because very soon, there wouldn't be a war on either side of the river. But this is our home. Oh, right. I guess you fire guys can stay. What about you, Icemen? We're not sure. There were so many great memories in this place. I don't know if we want to leave yet. Oh, stay as long as you like. Well, I'm definitely staying. Of course, Reginald. I wouldn't have it any other way. You're gonna go fight Ice Master soon, aren't you? Yeah, buddy. It sure seems that way. Do your best, okay? And come back safe. This base is not a home without you. Of course I'll be back. Shortly after that, the gardener walked in with the new enchanted block we'd be using to seal Ice Meister's evil side. Zozo, my boy, it is time. The sealing block is complete. We're going right now to the fortress of Ice Meister. All right, let's go. I said my goodbyes to everyone at the base. This adventure is almost at the most exciting part, so soon I'll be saying goodbye to you too. 
But don't worry, we'll have lots of other adventures together. Subscribe to the channel and go watch some of my other ones after this. There are so many to enjoy, like the time I spent 100 days as a lava wither. On day 99, the gardener and I returned to the fortress of Icemeister and found that it wasn't guarded at all. Where is everyone? It looks like you've brought peace to this land after all, Zozo. Must have been all that traveling and trying to do the right thing. Yeah, and most of all, he has no other mobs to fight for him. This is our chance! Yes. I blasted my way in and realized that I wasn't completely correct. There were traps everywhere that shot ice and snow at me and the gardener. Uh oh, Ooh, help! I'm not an evergreen tree. These cold temperatures are going to make my leaves fall off. Just stay close to me. I'll keep you warm. The trap door opened up beneath us. No, no, this is it. No way. I jumped over the spikes and landed safely on the other side. Then I used my tractor beam to catch the gardener and grapple him to safety. Thanks, you're using your fire wither storm powers for good. Never thought I'd see the day. You're right, I don't have to be a bad guy, even though I'm fiery and scary. I can help people just the way I am. Now you know, let's go get your true form back. You mean, you're letting me have the other block? Huh? Sure, the field only needs one at a time, and you've had your turn. Now, it's Ice Meister's turn. I can't believe I'm going to be returning to my true form after yes. all. This is so exciting. On day 100, the gardener and I came face to face with Ice Meister. He was holding the block that contained my true form. It's over, Ice Meister. Give back what you stole and we'll make this easy. Easy? You think there's an easy way out of this? I don't think so. You're a fire witherstorm and you're bad to the bone. Your path of destruction won't stop as long as you still exist. No, it stops now. I'm good and I can prove it to you. Zozo is telling the truth, Ice Meister. Why don't you call it quits? Our plants need that block. You mean this block? Ice Meister held up the block with my true form inside and absorbed it, becoming a terrifying new version of himself. As if that weren't bad enough, Ice Meister also spawned a bunch of other snowmen to attack us. Seize them, little ones. The gardener looked at me and held up the new enchanted block. I'll fire the ceiling spell up. You keep him and his minions busy. You got it. I unleashed all my powers on the miniature snowmen. I made sure to clear all of them out first before facing off against Ice Meister. You'll never defeat me, Zozo. I already have. You thought absorbing that power you took from me would help you win, but destructive power like that should only be used responsibly. And what would you know about that? More than you'd think. We all get to decide who we are, and I've decided that this is my true form. As soon as I said that, I instantly grew back to full size. I had 180 hearts. Now the playing field was even. Yes. While the Ice Meister was distracted, the gardener finished charging his spell. Zozo, now, move! I dodged out of the way as a beam shot forth from the block. In an instant, it absorbed Ice Meister's evil form and left behind only a tiny snowball. I'll get you for this. Okay, but take your time. Maybe you could be the good guy this time. With the seal set in place, the gardener was able to save the crops at his field. Meanwhile, I went back to my base in the Firelands. It was peaceful for now, and I hoped that would last. Either way, it was a good day to be myself. On day one, I spawned into the mountains as a diamond skeleton! Whoa! Even with ten hearts, I've got to be the most valuable bag of bones in the overworld! I wonder what kind of powers I have! But I didn't have any time to think about any potentially cool powers! A big, strong earth elemental rose out of the ground right in front of me! Yul! You are the skeleton that has defiled this land! Wait, what? That's impossible! I just got here! Your feeble excuses have no power here, you bony fiend! You should come with me before I'm forced to do anything drastic! No offense, buddy, but I feel like you don't have my best intentions at heart, so I'm getting out of here immediately! And I made good on my promise, turning and running as fast as I could! There was only one problem, diamond skeletons can't actually run very fast! Okay, so I know super speed isn't one of my powers! Pretty soon, the earth elemental had caught up to me, and I had to stop! I was feeling totally out of breath! Wow, that was incredibly embarrassing, you sad little skelly! Come with me, before you humiliate yourself even more! Sure, okay, just give me a second to catch my breath! On day two, the earth elemental ushered me back to a fortress high in the mountains, which looked like it'd be impossible to take over. This is the sanctum of sanctity. That'd be hard to say three times fast. 
Silent skeleton! You will stand before our ruler tomorrow and be given a fair trial for your crimes. What'll happen if I lose the trial? Oh, that's simple. You'll be executed. What? He didn't answer any more of my questions. Instead, he led me into the sanctum of sanctity and threw me into some kind of prison cell. Please, let me out. What about my human rights? You're a skeleton. Skeletons don't have human rights. And with that, he left and locked the door behind him. I was alone, or so I thought. There was actually a gold pig in the cell with me. Oink, oink. Hey there, bud. Name's Gary. Gary the Gold Pig. What are you in for? Hey, Gary. I'm Zozo. These guys trapped me in here for no reason. Have you been falsely imprisoned too? Well, not exactly. I was stealing. But I wasn't hurting anyone while I was doing it. That's better than nothing, I guess. These guys are huge jerks. We need to get out of here before we're tried and executed. Easier said than done, my friend. These walls are impenetrable, especially when you don't have any tools. Our conversation was interrupted when the Earth Elemental who had trapped me in here came back, opened the door, and stepped inside. Will you two be quiet? I can hardly think, let alone stand guard, while listening to your inane battling. How about instead, you... Without even thinking, I punched him, and that one punch completely destroyed him. Wow, that was amazing, Zozo. You're like some kind of one-punch man. I guess that's my first power, diamond hard punches. Let's get out of here before anyone else can find us. And that's exactly what we did. We escaped the Sanctum of Sanctity and ran off in different directions. On day three, I continued walking through the mountains. It was an exhausting process. I may have had those powerful diamond punches, but I still had absolutely sucky walking speed. All this walking is making me hungry. I wonder if I can find any food around here. I searched until I found an apple tree, which I knocked down some apples with another powerful diamond punch. Phew, these punches really take it out of me too. I should probably only use them in emergencies, just to be safe. I picked up the wooden blocks and the apples, eating them to replenish my hunger bar. I then continued my journey. Wait, what's that rattling sound? It almost sounds like bones. That's when I turned and saw a huge imposing figure. It was a mutant skeleton, and he was even bigger than I'd imagined. Oh my gosh, you're huge! It's nice of you to say, stranger. My name is Odokuro. It means rattling skull. What is your name? My name is Zozo. It means, uh, well, it means Zozo. Interesting. It's rare to see a skeleton brave enough to wander around here. And I've never seen one quite as shiny as you either. You must be skilled and powerful. Not as skilled and powerful as I'd like to be, sadly. That, my dear Zozo, I can help with. Follow me back to my dojo. Alrighty, Odokoro, lead the way. I followed Odokoro across the mountains, relieved to finally have a friend who could seemingly hold his own in a fight. From day four to day five, we arrived at Odokoro's dojo out in the bone dry Mojave Desert. What exactly does dojo mean, Odokoro? Is it like some kind of base? It's where I teach people to fight. You see, I am the greatest warrior in all of the overworld, and it is my privilege to teach others to fight as well as me, so they can fight for what they believe in. That sounds incredible, Odokuro! Please, Zozo, call me Sensei. It means teacher. And the first part of learning to fend for yourself is learning to put a roof over your head. Take this stone pickaxe and this stone sword. Make yourself a home in the desert. The harsh environment will make you hardy and strong. Yes, Sensei! My sensei, Odokuro, gave me the stone sword and pickaxe, and I went off on my own, traveling until I found a nice spot in the Mojave to build my base. I mined up some stone and some sand that I could use to start building myself a cool little base. It wasn't much yet, but it seemed like a cool way to begin my training. As I stopped building to look back and admire my work, another earth elemental snuck up on me and started to attack. I knew you were an evil skeleton! You destroyed one of my fellow elementals, and now I'll destroy you! But I was ready to fight back. With my stone sword, I was able to beat the Earth Elemental, gaining enough XP in the process to level up and get stronger. I was bigger, a little faster, and now had 20 hearts instead of just 10. And what's this new power I feel coursing through my fists? Without even thinking, I turned and walked into a tree, blowing it up. Whoa, I guess my new wall demolition ability can knock down walls and apparently trees as well. That's awesome. Darn, I need to replant this tree now. From day six to day eight, I walked around the desert looking for new things to punch and test out my awesome strength. If this is how strong I am at the start of Sensei Otokuro's training, imagine how awesome I'll be as he trains me even more. 
During my wandering, I happened upon a familiar face, too. It was Gary, the light-fingered gold pig I'd met inside the Sanctum of Sanctity. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Zozo, don't sneak up on me like that. I'm on edge enough as it is after what I've been through. Oh no, what's wrong, Gary? Are you okay? I was attacked by this crazy mutant enderman. If I didn't run as fast as I could, he would have destroyed me. You've got to be careful, Sozo. There are some real dangerous people out there. I know exactly what you mean. That's why I'm training with Sensei Otokuro, so I can get strong enough to fight off bad guys like that. Sensei Otokuro? Why does that name sound so familiar? Oh well, maybe I'll remember it later when I'm less stressed. And with that, Gary went on his way. Unsettled by the knowledge of how many dangerous creatures are out there, I returned to my sensei's base, ready for his next lesson. Climbing up the hanging ladders, I found him at the top of the dojo in his living quarters. You've done well against the Earth Elemental, Sozo. But to improve, you must face stronger opponents. There is a mutated bee out in the mangrove swamp, a formidable foe for someone of your strength. Go forth and destroy him and see your powers grow. From day 9 to day 10, I followed Sensei Otokuro's instructions and went out to the mangrove swamp, seeking to meet with and battle this mutated bee. He sounds like a tough customer, but I believe I'm ready to take him on. It didn't take me long to find him. His bright yellow and black stood out against the colors of the swamp. Buzz off, kid. I don't want to fight anyone. I left my fighting days behind me long ago. I hurt too many people. That's not who I am anymore. If you were a villain once, you're a villain now, mutated bee! Sensei Otokuro demands that I fight you! Otokuro? I haven't heard that name in years! Well, kid, if you want to fight, I'll give you the fight of your life! The mutated bee fought me, and he was every bit as tough as Sensei Otokuro had said. I did manage to defeat him in the end, but by then, I barely had any hearts left. I, I can't rush my training. If I do, I think I'm really gonna get hurt. On my way out of the swamp, I ran into none other than Gary the Gold Pig. Oh hey, Zozo, you're not looking so hot, buddy. Maybe take this health potion. Nah, I stole it from some guy. I drank the health potion Gary gave me and breathed a sigh of relief as my health replenished itself. Thanks, Gary, you're a lifesaver. Sensei Otokuro will be pleased to see that I'm doing okay. Here's that name again. Gosh, where did I hear it? Uh, guess I'll let you know if it comes back to me. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to the dojo of Sensei Otokuro, eager to tell him about how well I'd done in the battle with the mutated bee. Your power grows, Zozo, but you still have much to learn. That being said, I see the potential for true strength in you, but a true warrior feels no fear. Go first into the darkness to make fear your ally, then return to the mangrove swamp, find the lethal swamp pig clan, and destroy every last one of them. Destroy a whole clan? Isn't that a uh, little harsh, Sensei? Never, ever question my teaching, Zozo. Perform the task. Your Sensei wills it. Feeling doubtful, but knowing that my Sensei must know best, I found the darkest darkness I could find, a mining cave. I explored the dark, worrying about what could lurk behind every corner. However, while down there in the dark, I discovered something awesome. A dusty old chest containing a few pieces of iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron pickaxe. The sensei really is always right. I equipped the sword and the armor pieces, then left the cave. But just as I was about to exit, I was stopped in my tracks by another earth elemental. You won't escape this time, you skeleton fiend! I'm really getting tired of you guys. The fight didn't last long. With my new power and new iron sword, I defeated him in no time. From day 13 to day 15, following Sensei Otokuro's instructions, I went back to the mangrove swamp and searched through until I found a small settlement full of pigs. This must be the Swamp Pig Clan. They don't look like a gang of lethal warriors, they just look like peaceful little pigs. What's going on? I decided to investigate further, venturing into the settlement and approaching the largest of the Swamp Pigs. Excuse me, sir, but are you the head of the legendary Swamp Pig Warrior Clan? That just made him laugh. Warrior Clan? We're a clan of peaceful farmers, living off the fat of the land. We don't know the first thing about fighting. I have no idea where you got that from. Then I'm... No, this isn't right. I'm sorry for bothering you, Mr. Swamp Pig. Confused and worried, all I could do was leave the settlement as quickly as I could, making a beeline back to the Mojave Desert. Sensei Otokuro has some explaining to do. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to Sensei Otokoro's base and told him everything that had happened. He was furious with me. You dare go against my orders after I explicitly told you not to question me? But Sensei, they weren't warriors. 
I am no longer your sensei. Be gone from the dojo, Zozo. I cannot teach someone who doesn't respect and honor my judgment. I was devastated, but I had no choice but to leave. I guess that I just wasn't cut out to be an awesome warrior in the end. I might have just been doomed to be a sad, slow diamond skeleton forever. When I got back to my base, Gary was waiting for me. Zozo, Zozo, I remember where I heard that name before, Sensei Urokuro. He's not even my sensei anymore, Gary. There's no point. But it was the mutant Enderman. When he attacked me, he said, Sensei Otakuro will be so pleased. He must have been on his orders. Wait, Otakuro has other students, and they're out there attacking people? Oh no, I need to go back to the mangrove swamp. I ran back to the Swamp Pig Clan settlement as quickly as I could, but it was already too late. Otokuro was there, and he'd already destroyed all of them. You monster! It's better to be a monster than a weakling, Zozo. My best students understand this. You are but a naive little fool. What, it's foolish to not want to attack innocents? There are no innocents, Zozo. Only practice. I'll give you one chance to decide. Are you with me or against me? I could never be with you or any of your horrible students. I pulled out my iron sword and ran towards him to attack, but he knocked me out cold in a single strike. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up dazed and aching in the ruins of the Swamp Pig settlement. Otokuro hadn't left a single survivor. That monster, I feel so terrible for ever helping him. I can't believe all his students have been terrorizing the overworld and I was almost one of them. As I was making my way through the swamps, I saw Gary the Gold Pig emerging from the distance and trotting towards me. Zozo, thank goodness you're alive. I had no idea you were up against such terrifying enemies. The world is even scarier than I thought. But it doesn't have to be, Gary. Come back to my base with me. I'll build you a room and we'll start working on a battle plan to take down these evildoers once and for all. You know what? You have a point, Zozo. I've spent my whole life stealing from people. Now, I want to do something right. Let's go, buddy. I went back to my base in the Mojave Desert with Gary and built a new building for him to live in. It felt good to finally be allied with someone whose worst crime was stealing potions and not destroying whole clans of innocents for fun. From day 23 to day 26, I decided to investigate the mountain some more and see if I could track down any of Sensei Otokoro's other sadistic students. If they were out here destroying settlements in the overworld, then they needed to be stopped at once. While I was exploring, it didn't take me long to overhear a cry for help from a passing mushroom summoner. Please spare me, kind skeleton. There's a mutant zombie right behind me. Destroy it, I beseech you. I don't know what a beseech is, but you'd better get behind me. Sure enough, there was a vile, brainless mutant zombie coming after the poor summoner. I leapt in to defend the innocent mushroom summoner with a swing of my sword, but the shuffling undead was far stronger than I'd ever expected. The mutant zombie was tough, and he got a few powerful hits on me. I swung back with my diamond skeleton punches, and while it took a few more than usual, I had soon knocked his health right down. You can come back out now. Oh, thank you. Please help yourself to this. It's the latest of my horticultural findings, a fungus imbued with magical properties. Um, thanks. I ate the mushroom and could suddenly feel myself getting stronger. I now had 50 whole hearts. I could shoot energy blasts from my hands. Wow, now this'll be fun, guy. From day 27 to day 31, I roamed the mountains some more. The encounter with the mutant zombie was playing on my mind. Where had that horrid undead creature come from? Was it connected to my nefarious former sensei in some way? I got distracted by a flock of sheep that looked like they'd lost their shepherd. Or that perhaps something bad had happened to them. Hey there, little guys. It's not safe for you all to be up here on the mountainside. You better come back to my base where you'll be safe. If we come across your owner, I'm sure he'll be glad I got you guys to safety. So I headed back to my base and got to work settling up a pen for the sheep. Once I was done, Gary was excited to show me something. Come check it out, Zozo. I built us a brand new storage room. Now we've got somewhere to keep all our loot. I mean, uh, oops, old habits. I mean, all the equipment we can use to bring the fight to Sensei Otakuro. Speaking of Otakuro, within his dojo in the Mojave Desert, my former teacher was conferring with one of his deadliest students. Sensei, I have followed your teachings and laid waste to another settlement. Their souls are now forever cursed to have fallen at my hand. That will make them perfect candidates to join the ranks of your undead army. Good work, apprentice. You've been more loyal than that cowardly skeleton. 
and I have a new task for you. Bring me the diamond skull of Zozo! From day 32 to day 35, I decided to backtrack to the fortress high in the mountains. I had realized that those earth elementals who had captured me might have only done so because they thought I was working for Sensei Otokuro. After all, one had called me evil when he saw I was carrying out Otokuro's commands. But I figured I would need allies. Me and my gold pig pal weren't going to be able to take him down alone. Look over there! It's the diamond skeleton working with Otokuro! Get him! Whoa, hold on guys! I'm not here to fight! It was too late. An earth elemental was coming straight towards me. We clashed swords. I had to hold off from using my diamond hard punches and energy blasts. I needed to convince them that I meant no harm. Listen to me. I'm not following Otokoro's teachings anymore. He's a barbaric, irredeemable monster. What took you so long to realize? Don't be mean. I was tricked. Then you should talk with our boss. The earth elementals brought me before their leader, a wise old illusioner. You have renounced Otokoro's vile ways. Good. Then perhaps you'll be the one to put a stop to his reign of terror. I'll take him down. He's hurting innocent people, and he's got to be stopped. I must convene with my earth elementals. I can provide you with the means to stop Otokuro, but first, we must decide if you are trustworthy. Now go! From day 36 to day 39, I didn't want to waste any time waiting on the illusionist's decision. I needed to get stronger in the meantime. I decided it was time to upgrade my armor, so I went searching the mines for the remaining pieces to complete the set. And boy oh boy, I didn't just find what I was looking for, but struck a motherload of diamonds too! It was almost like being a diamond skeleton up to draw me to where they were hidden underground. I could sense them without even realizing it. After I had gathered up the diamonds, ready to craft some neat stuff with them later, Gary excitedly called me back to base. Check it out, Zozo! Look what I stole! I mean, acquired while you were gone! It was a special gong of weakening! After striking it, it weakens all enemies around me for seven seconds! But before I had a chance to try it out, an armored mountaineer approached my base! You're Zozo, right? I'm a messenger. I've been sent by the Illusioner. He's ready to speak with you now and request your presence back at the Earth Elemental Fortress! From day 40 to day 43, I made the long trek back to where I'd last met the Illusioner. But as I approached the fortress, I immediately noticed something was wrong. The diamond skeleton was here. Tell me what you told him, or suffer in the name of Sensei Otokuro. It was the mutant Enderman. It must have been one of Otokuro's other students. He was turning the place upside down, battling with the Earth Elementals as they desperately tried to defend the fortress against his attacks. But his training, he'd clearly been following Sensei Otokuro's brutal teachings, and they were no match for the mutant Enderman. I ran over to the Illusioner as quickly as I could. Illusioner, quick! We need to do something! Zozo, no! Drawing you out is what Otokuro wants. My elementals will die before they give away your location. But we must flee before Otokuro's student realizes you're here! From day 44 to day 49, I hurriedly escorted the Illusioner back to the safety of my base. He seemed upset about the attack on his fortress, but I didn't really know what to say to comfort him. Once we'd made it back, he sat me down to reveal his decision. I have opted to trust you with this, Zozo. I believe your remorse for serving Odakuro to be genuine. I know all too well how deceptive he can be, which is why I will impart to you this knowledge. There is a way we can stop him, but it requires a weapon known only as the Destroyer, and to rebuild it will be no easy task. I can guide you through the first steps, but to complete it requires secrets I do not possess. Well, where can I find the rest of the steps to build the Destroyer? Patience. For now, here's how to get started. I followed the Illusioner's instructions written on the blueprint to the letter, making sure I had done everything I could right now to make a start on the Destroyer. It was kind of nice having him help me along, almost like having a new sensei who wasn't as evil as Sensei Otokuro. Once I'd done all I could, that was when the Illusioner told me about an ancient book of secrets that contained instructions for finishing the Destroyer. It was lost somewhere in the mangrove swamp, so I began to make my way over there as fast as my slow skeleton legs would carry me. From day 50 to day 53, I searched high and low in the stinky mangrove swamp for anywhere that might be housing the Book of Secrets. I was expecting to find an old temple or an abandoned cave, but there was nothing of the sort anywhere around. Eventually, I had to change up my approach. I didn't know where to look, but one of the locals might. I struck up a conversation with the first person I met, a royal guard. Book of Secrets? Sorry, geezer. No clue. Nobody's seen it in a dog's age. Been lost in the swamp. 
Great, that's super helpful. I don't suppose anyone knows what's written in it or how to rebuild the destroyer to stop Sensei Otokoro? Otokoro? Blimey, mate! He's a tough customer! You know he once commanded an army of mutant undead? He did? That's horrible! Yeah, it was! Otokoro believed in being the strongest bloke around, and he trained himself up a nasty gang of blighters. He never wanted them to be tougher than he was, so he kept some stuff to himself. Then if any of his pupils ever croaked, he'd use necromancy to bring them back and make them fight for him as undead zombies. But eventually, he crossed the wrong fella. Some real brain box who built a device that would destroy Otokuro. That's why it's called the Destroyer, see? Wow, I never would have guessed that. Well, Otokuro got wind of what was being made to defy him and tried to wreck him. But it blew up in his face and took out a lot of his undead army. Rumor has it, he's been trying to build his forces back up ever since. I still had no clue where the Book of Secrets was hidden. I didn't know the Mangrove Swamp well enough to find it. And without the book, I couldn't complete the Destroyer just yet. So instead, I headed back to base. From day 54 to day 57, I was making my way back to my base, taking a longer detour through the mountains, just in case any more of Sensei Orokuro's students were causing trouble nearby. Little did I realize, one of them was much closer than I'd anticipated. Suddenly, the mutant Enderman burst out of the shadows and attacked me, wielding all the fury and fear of Otakuro's twisted teachings. There you are, the one who ran away. At last, I shall defeat you and bring that diamond skull of yours to my sensei as a trophy. I had no choice but to fight back, but I couldn't land even a single energy blast on the evil Enderman. He would just teleport out of the way, and each blast would miss. Then he started using his special abilities, like picking up blocks, throwing them at me, and cloning himself. I couldn't risk being captured and brought back to Sensei Otokuro, or worse. So, I had to dash. I luckily made my escape. Meanwhile, within his lair, Sensei Otokuro was summoning the latest addition to his undead army. By my hand, I command these ancient bones to rise, return to the land of the living, and follow my teachings, mighty skeleton vanguard! From day 58 to day 62, battered and exhausted, I was relieved to finally make it back to the safety of my base. After a brief nap to regain my strength, Gary, my gold pig pal, was eager to show off his latest, definitely not stolen, project. Hey, hey, Zozo! Check it out, a brand new furnace for us. Now we can really turn up the heat on old Okuro, eh? Get it? Yeah, I got it, Gary. Great job. The base was looking great now, but I was concerned after facing the mutant Enderman and barely making it away alive. We needed somewhere well defended, so I gathered up lots of sandstone to build a bunker out of it. Although it was tricky, because the sand kept falling on my head. I eventually gathered enough and started building the bunker. Speaking of defense, I thought it was about time I defended myself a little better too. My old iron armor had done the trick until now, but it was useless against Sensei Otokuro's stronger students. So I headed into the mines and let my diamond skeleton senses guide me to more diamonds. I had plenty in my inventory now, enough to craft a new diamond sword and a matching pickaxe, plus a full set of diamond armor. Since Otokuro was after my skull, I thought protecting it was my best option. And there is nothing more stylish than a diamond skeleton in full diamond armor. From day 63 to day 66, I spoke with the illusioner about how I hadn't been able to find the Book of Secrets. Hmm, most troubling news. I think I shall have to accompany you. I may know where we can look. So, I followed his lead, and we ended up at the edge of an area I'd never seen before, the Nether Waste. What the heck? I could have sworn this place wasn't here before. It has always been here, but not all have the means to see. These wastes are shrouded by a complex illusion. But you can lift it, right? I can, but it will take time. Casting illusions is my specialty. Removing them is much harder, especially when they have been cast by another. So we can't get there? I will attempt to break the illusion, and then we should be able to access the nether wastes. Well, okay. In the meantime, I guess I'll just wait. Patience, Zozo. I will need you at my side to defend me while I break the illusion. Nether wastes may not be the only thing being hidden. From day 67 to day 70, the illusioner was hard at work, lifting the illusion that was stopping us from getting to the nether wastes. But something seemed to be bothering him while he was working. Zozo, I think there is something wrong. I sense a foul presence afoot in the mountains. One of Odakuro's undead but far more powerful than his zombies. You stay here, I'll go and take care of whatever it is. 
I made my way towards the mountains, and it didn't take long for me to come across what the problem was. It was the Skeleton Vanguard! After losing my last tangle with one of Sensei Otokuro's minions, I wasn't feeling confident I could best this creature. But perhaps there was a way I could reason with it. Old bones, old bones. Say, I know you're a little confused right now. I guess that must happen when you're brought back from the dead. But the one who brought you back, he just wants to use you. Believe me, he did it to me too. But us skeletons need to stick together. New bones, new bones. The skeleton vanguard lunged at me, disoriented. I had to hold back my punches and energy blasts. There was still a chance I could convince him to abandon Otakuro. If only I could get him to hold still. Wait, maybe he will respond to the gong. I struck it as hard as I could, and the skeleton vanguard was stunned, and it gave me a chance to talk to him. Listen, I don't want to hurt you. Otokuro might have brought you back, but to him, you're just an undead soldier. I promise if you help me, we can take that monster down and set you free. Then your old bones can rest. Old bones, old bones. Slowly, the skeleton vanguard seemed to calm down. I had done it. He was now on our side. From day 71 to day 74, I was heading back to the base with the skeleton vanguard, only to see something terrible as I approached. The mutant enderman had found my hideout and was ransacking it. I hadn't even been able to finish the defensive bunker, and now Otokuro's star student of slaughter was destroying huge portions of my home. I tried to use my gong of weakening to stop him, but instead, he attacked me and stole it. Thanks for the gong, loser. I retreated and hid in a part of the base that was still intact. And before long, the mutant endermen seemed to get bored and leave. I was feeling awful, worried that I'd never be able to beat the mean mutant endermen. And if I couldn't stop one of his weaker students, then I had no chance of stopping Sensei Otokuro. Zozo, buddy, you still in there? You can come out now. Gary told me that he and the skeleton vanguard had been busy rebuilding the base while I'd been feeling sad. I had made an effort to refortify the place against any future attacks and they'd done it to try and cheer me up. I had to admit, it made me feel a little better. A little did I know, Sensei Otokuro was almost finished working on his undead army. I have almost amassed my forces once more, and once my prized pupil discovers the location of the Diamond Skeleton's hideout, soon we will march. My zombies and I will subjugate the overworld. From day 75 to day 78, the Illusioner returned to the base. He approached me to talk about how clearing the illusion had gone. Whoever cast that illusion over the nether waste was certainly remarkably powerful. You think it could have been Otakuro? No, he only seeks the power to destroy, not to conceal. Perhaps the original architect of the Destroyer was responsible. He might have cast the illusion to keep his book of secrets hidden. Were you able to clear it? Mostly. But you should be able to reach the nether waste and find the book. First things first though, I want my gong of weakening back. I set off to hunt down the mutant enderman. I wasn't going to let him get away with my stuff. And if I could take him down, then I could prove to myself that I was strong enough to stop Otokuro too. From day 79 to day 84, I spotted the mutant enderman in the Mojave Desert and immediately launched an energy blast. With his back to me, he didn't see it coming and couldn't teleport out of the way. Caught off guard, I landed a hit, but it only angered him. You won't make me look weak in front of my sensei! He leapt at me, and we fought. Without my gong of weakening, it was hard to gain an advantage over the Enderman. Just when I thought I was about to land a strike with my sword, or a powerful diamond punch, he'd zip out of the way, and I'd miss. Suddenly, he threw blocks back at me and knocked me far back with a powerful attack. Then, a sudden surge of power overtook me. I got way bigger than before and even had a hundred hearts. Catching both myself and the mutant enderman by surprise, I suddenly fired a new special laser attack. The beam struck him right in the center and he couldn't get out of the way quick enough. With a few more hits to finish him off, Sensei Otokuro's right-hand enderman was defeated. I grabbed my gong of weakening, glad to finally have it back, and the mutant enderman had also dropped something, a special key. Ah, better hang on to this, it might come in handy later. From day 85 to day 89, I made my triumphant way back to base. To my surprise, Gary had gone out of his way to finish up working on the defensive bunker. Thought we could get the last of it done, now we'll be safe if there's any more trouble. Well, the mutant enderman won't be coming back here anytime soon. That's great news, Zozo. Now that I had my gong of weakening back, I decided to also head back to the nether waste. Sure enough, the illusion blocking the area was now gone, and I searched for the Book of Secrets. Sure enough, 
there it was, waiting for me at an altar. But so were a horde of mutant creepers. Using my weapons, I was able to defeat the diabolical monsters, and then I was free to grab the Book of Secrets. Now I had the last thing I needed to complete the Destroyer and put a stop to Sensei Otokuro's schemes. From day 90 to day 94, using the Book of Secrets, I started making the reinforced handles and the warped fungus which gives the Iron Destroyer that extra power. When holding it in hand, I felt its power flowing through me. At long last, I'm strong enough to take on my old sensei and right the wrongs I helped him create. But on my way out of the nether waste, I saw my oldest enemy standing right in front of me. It was my former sensei, Otokuro. Hello there, former student. It's been too long since we've seen one another, skull to skull. That's because your other students have been trying to take my skull. You shouldn't take such a thing personally, Zozo. There are bumps on the road for every journey of training. They're there to test our strength. I've seen the way you fight, how you've bested all my other students. You have impressed me, Zozo. Why not resume your teaching with me? You can reach levels of strength you've never even imagined. I'll never be your student, ever again. And I don't need anything you could teach me. I'm powerful enough to beat you already. I wouldn't be so sure. Before I could move, Otokura fired a plasma blast at me, and that blast paralyzed me. I was frozen in place, and while I was unable to move, Otokura approached and stole the destroyer from me. Foolish decision, Zozo. I'll let you live this time, just so you can languish in your shame. But next time I see you, rest assured, I will destroy you completely. And with that, he ran back into the depths of the nether. From day 95 to day 97, I was at first alone in the nether waste. I had to summon up all my willpower to overcome the paralyzing spell. As soon as I had, I left the nether waste for the mountains. I needed to team up with the illusioner and his elementals as quickly as I could. However, when I arrived, the fortress was in ruins and the elementals were all gone. Without the destroyer out there, Otokuro felt comfortable unleashing his full power. There was no one who could stop him. The only survivor was the Illusioner, and even he was on the edge of his demise. Zozo, it's too late for me. Don't waste your time. Get the Destroyer back, and finally surpass your old sensei for the good of the overworld. The Illusioner was gone. Feeling terrible, I set off towards my base. On day 98, I arrived back at my base, only to find it decimated, just like the fortress in the mountains. Only Gary the Gold Pig was still alive. Zozo, that monster! He came here and destroyed everything. He even destroyed the skeleton vanguard. I may be a thief, but that bony buddy stole my heart. We can't let him get away with this. We can't stop him, Gary. He has the Destroyer, and the Destroyer is the only weapon that can destroy him. Hence the name! Zozo, take it from the expert. You can get it back from him. You just need to go to his dojo and steal it. Wow, you're right, Gary. All these different people I've learned from all this time, and I didn't even think to learn from you. On day 99, I arrived at my old sensei's dojo, but I couldn't exactly walk in. If I was going to steal that destroyer, I needed to use the element of surprise. I quietly searched around the dojo until on the second floor, I found a pedestal with a keyhole in the middle. Wait, my special key. This must be what it unlocks. I turned the key, and in the middle of the dojo, a secret floor dropped down into the basement but it was locked. I snuck in. Otokuro had no idea I was in there. Now I just need to get the destroyer back. I turned and saw Otokuro standing right there, but with his back turned to me. This was my chance. I snuck up behind him, and using techniques I'd learned from Gary, I stole back the destroyer. Otokuro turned to me with shock. Zozo, what have you done? I've leveled the playing field, sensei. On day 100, I was facing off against the Sensei, ready for the final battle. You were always such a disappointment to Zozo. Your skills showed such great promise, but you could never follow orders. How can you expect to learn from me now? There's nothing I want to learn from you. I'm no longer the student, Otakuro. Now, I'm the master. I knew that the longer I fought him, the more chance he'd have to turn the tables. He shot his plasma blasts, but they no longer had the same effect as before. I knew I needed to end this quickly, once and for all. I summoned all my power into one final strike with the destroyer. I ran towards him, putting every ounce of my power into the strike. Boom! 
Otokuro exploded into bones! The evil had finally been defeated, and the student truly had become the master! On day one, I spawned into the frozen lakes as an ice wither storm! Whoa! Even as a baby ice wither storm, I'm pretty awesome! And thank goodness, because I don't feel cold out here either! But my celebrations were interrupted when I heard the flapping of mighty wings coming towards me! I looked up and saw a huge ice dragon floating in the air above me! Uh, me? I'm Zozo, mister! Ivan fired a huge ice blast down towards me! It nearly hit me, but I was lucky enough to dodge at the last second! Hey, you almost hit me! He unleashed an even more powerful ice blast! And this time, I just had to run for my life! Gotta beat Ivan, or he's gonna freeze me to my doom! On day two, I wandered further across the frozen lakes. In weather this freezing, even I started to feel the cold. This is so embarrassing for an ice weather storm. Maybe I just need some food. I only have 10 hearts. It's important to keep my hunger bar filled up. I searched across the frozen lakes until I finally found an apple tree. It's not easy to grow food in a place this cold, so I needed to enjoy everything I could get. I broke down the tree and ate some of the apples, solving the hunger situation. But it didn't solve the situation of a dread thrall charging out of the distance! Is it? I'm not sure I follow your logic here. The dread thrall ran at me and unleashed some powerful attacks! I wasn't strong enough to fight him yet, so all I could do was break away from the fight and run for my life! I got out of there as fast as I could, but as I cowered behind a pile of snow, I heard something approaching! I was terrified, worried that it could be the dread thrall! Instead, a cyclops stepped out! How could I deny an offer like that? On day three, the Cyclops led me across a safe part of the frozen lakes, telling me to keep as quiet as possible. Where are you taking me? I kept quiet as the Cyclops led me, then he suddenly stopped. Okay, understood! I followed the Cyclops' instructions until, predictably, I found myself at the campfire where the Dodo Hippogriff was waiting! Wait, what do you mean, the last one? But if he's after Ice Witherstorms, why are you and that Cyclops guy so afraid of him and his goons? What do I need to do? From day four to day five, I carried out the Dodo Hippogriff's wishes and left with the Cyclops. I knew that if I was going to survive this, I needed to put a roof over both of our heads. Sit tight, Cyclops. I'm gonna make us some tools and get started. I knocked down a tree with my Witherstorm strength and made the pieces into a wooden pickaxe. From there, I mined into the ground and collected some stone. I had to be careful where I mined and built because some areas were just a thin layer of ice over water. When I had enough stone, I built myself a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. With my spare stone, I started building a basic two-room base to protect myself and Cyclops from the elements. Thank you! I think? But it may not have been that low key. All that building had attracted a dangerous dirt scorpion a long way away from home. 
as it attacked, this time I fought back until the Dirt Scorpion was defeated. This gave me the XP to level up, getting 30 hearts and a new power, Ice Blast. Now I can finally start living up to my Ice Wither Storm name. From day six to day eight, I left the Cyclops back at the base while I went out to explore a nearby frosty mountain range called the Alps. Wow, the air is very thin up here. I probably wouldn't make a habit of hanging out up here. But my thoughts were interrupted by an adorable orange and white kitty running up towards me. Aww. Calm down, calm down. What's going on here, kitty? Don't worry, kitty. You just hang back here and I'll go take care of it. Please, call me Zozo. I braced myself and went off in the direction that the kitty came from. It didn't take me long to find the Dread Scuttler, and with the help of my Ice Blast and my Stone Sword, it didn't take long for me to beat it either. Afterwards, the kitty approached me, happy that I'd taken care of the nasty Dread Scuttler. Please, it was nothing. Sure, I'll always do my best. From day nine to day 10, I followed Kitty's instructions and went further into the Alps. That's where I found the Dreadlich waiting. Talk is cheap, Dreadlich, let's duke it out. But it didn't take me long to regret being so gung-ho. The Dreadlich was way tougher than I thought. He tanked my attacks and returned with some magical attacks of his own. My only option was to run away and survive to fight another day. I met with Kitty again and told her the bad news. And I'm gonna take care of the Dreadlich too, but I need to get stronger first. Why don't you come and stay at my base in the frozen lakes? It'll probably be safer there. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with Kitty and quickly set about building a new room in my base for her to stay. I made sure it was the kind of room that'd be really cozy for a cute little kitty. What do you think, Kitty? And Kitty certainly had made some awesome upgrades. She created a sheep farm full of, yep, you guessed it, sheep. She'd also created a furnace and a storage room. Are you implying I should go and forge myself some new weapons, Kitty? I searched until I found a decent cavern for mining and searched until I found a healthy vein of iron ore. I dug up the ore and took it back to my base with me. There, I used the furnace Kitty built to smelt my ore into iron ingots. And with those and some sticks, I made myself an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. Now I'm stronger than ever before. That's what I'm talking about. From day 13 to day 15, I spoke to the Cyclops again, asking if he had any advice on how to get strong enough to defeat Ivan the Ice Dragon. I fought a lot of things. Oh, uh, a dirt scorpion and a dread scuttler. Great advice, Cyclops. Following his advice, I went back to the Alps. Even making my way up there was exhausting. This was going to be more challenging than I thought. It was the same Dreadthrall who'd hassled me earlier. But this time, I wasn't going to talk to him. I was going to fight him, and I was going to win. With a combination of Ice Blasts and Lethal Strikes from my Iron Sword, the Dreadthrall was vanquished, and I picked up a healing potion he dropped. Once I'd swigged it down, I started to transform. I got bigger, stronger, I had 60 hearts, and a new ability, shooting with a Wither Scroll. Half Ice, half Wither Storm. My power is really coming along. From day 16 to day 19, I went from the mountains of the Alps to the even higher frozen peaks. If getting challenged makes you tougher, I'm gonna be as tough as one of these mountains soon. During my journey, I happened upon a book laying on the ground. Its title read, Dreadthrall's Diary. Well, this seems like essential reading. There was a section that read, Ivan's been such a drag since that ice witherstorm turned up. 
He's so paranoid and stuck in his own head. He started staying in that base in the eroded Badlands. What kind of ice dragon hangs out in the Badlands? It's way too hot there. He's staying in the eroded Badlands? That's really useful information. I looked up and saw another Dreadthrall standing a few feet from me. Before he said another word, I blasted the Dreadthrall with a powerful Wither Skull and he was no more. From day 20 to day 22, while heading back from the frozen peaks, I wiped out a small but vicious gang of coyotes. It feels good to be so powerful. I think I've earned myself a treat. I returned to my favorite mining cavern and collected a few extra trunks of iron ore. Then I returned to my base and used the furnace to smelt them into iron ingots. From that, I built myself an iron chest plate and equipped it. You probably can't see it in all my Witherstorm swirls, but it feels good to know it's there. With my new power and new armor, I felt the confidence to go back and settle an old score. I returned to the Alps where I saw the Dreadlich waiting. I'd like to see you try, Dreadlich. This time, it was a much more even fight. With my Wither Skulls and Ice Blast, this time I put him down for good. Kitty is gonna be so pleased when I tell her. Suddenly, a chill went down my already chilly Ice Witherstorm spine. I heard the great flapping of wings in the sky above and saw Ivan the Ice Dragon coming towards me. As strong as I'd gotten, I still wasn't tough enough to take on Ivan yet. I did the only thing I could and ran. From day 23 to day 26, I made it safely back to my base and rushed to tell Kitty the good news. Hey Kitty, remember that dreadlet you were having trouble with? Well, those troubles are over. I defeated him. I didn't want to rest on my victory for too long. After all, I had only just narrowly escaped from Ivan. I still needed to get much stronger if I was going to take him down for good. I decided to venture back to the mines and have another shot at gathering up some more iron ore. Luckily for me, there was plenty to be found in another vein underground and I hacked away with my pickaxe. Once I had gathered up enough ore, I smelted it into some shiny new iron ingots. I had plenty to smith myself an iron helmet and sturdy pair of iron boots to match my chest piece. Now I was fully protected. What's new, kitty cat? Whoa, Kitty had been working on an upgrade to my base as a way of saying thank you for helping her out. She'd built a brand new perimeter wall to keep danger at bay. Now I wasn't the only one with added protection. My base and my friends were too. From day 27 to day 31, I headed back to the frozen peaks. Now that a few of the Dreadthralls and that pesky Dread Lich were taken care of, it was a bit safer for me to explore the area. Although, I had my guard up when I spotted a mighty behemoth. But was he a friend or foe? Sorry, I can't be too careful with Ivan and his Dread Horde around. Are you gonna keep making jokes like that all day? You're right, and it's not safe for you here, Behemoth. Head back to my base with me. I made my way back to the base with the behemoth. Once we had returned, I was able to grab some wool from the flock of sheep in the pen and use that wool to make some nice decorative banners that really livened the place up. Once the decorating work was done, the cyclops ran over in a panic. Then lead the way. From day 32 to day 35, my cyclops friend and mentor took me towards the frozen lakes where we came across a sight that even made my ice witherstorm self shiver. A swarm of Ivan the Ice Dragon's dreadthralls were chasing after Dodo the Hippogriff. I leapt into battle, swinging my iron sword to chop down some of the dread thralls. I let off an ice blast, then another attack, my wither skull blast. I was desperately trying to clear a path to reach the dodo hippogriff, but there were just too many dread thralls in the way. No! The dread thralls destroyed the dodo hippogriff. I slashed my sword at them, taking down each and every one of them until not a single thrall was left standing. But I was still too late. 
From day 36 to day 39, I decided to wander off on my own for a little while. I needed to clear my head and be alone with my thoughts. I hadn't known the Dodo Hippogriff all that long, but I was still sad I couldn't save him. He'd had a lot of faith in me being able to take on Ivan, so I figured maybe my sadness was a reminder that I couldn't take his wisdom for granted. I had to make sure I lived up to the Dodo Hippogriff's expectations. On my travels, I encountered a cactoid in the Alps. Sure thing, just point me at the nasty critter and it's as good as gone. The cactoid led me to the creature that had been coming after him, a horrible hellhound. I grabbed my sword and readied for a fight. After all, the dodo hippogriff had told me the path to victory was getting stronger and any battle was a chance to improve. I took down the hellhound with little effort and went back to the cactoid to tell him the good news. Yeah, that dragon really is vain. He took out one of my friends just to get at me. From day 40 to day 43, I decided it was time to rejoin my friends back at the base. The Cyclops and I had parted briefly after we lost the Dodo Hippogriff, but I thought about what he'd said before. Only with our powers combined could we take down Ivan. Thanks, Cyclops. Say, this place looks a little different. The Cyclops had worked really hard at making the base more homely, just the thing I needed to lift my spirits after losing the Dodo Hippogriff. He'd built plenty of new bookshelves and even a few comfy couches. You know, Cyclops, it's not like we can sit on more than one of these couches at a time. Not at all, the more, the merrier. After the other Cyclopses came in and found their places, the behemoth came over to talk to me. From day 44 to day 49, I set off from my base to carry out a quest that my friend the behemoth had given me. He said that there was a silver lobo hiding somewhere in the frozen peaks, and that he had some useful info that would help me taking down Ivan, if I could take him down that is. But while I was beginning my search, I heard the flap of two icy wings and had to leap out of the way as Ivan arrived, swooping in for an ambush. What's your problem, Ivan? You're really going out of your way to try and stop me from getting stronger. Seems like you might be a little insecure. Suddenly, a monstrous reaver burst out of nowhere and came charging towards me. Ivan had already flapped away, leaving his minion to take me on. This creature might be my toughest fight yet. From day 50 to day 53, I got to fighting the reaver. This thing was one of the most powerful mobs I'd ever seen. It was all brute strength and rage. I deflected its blows with my iron sword, the occasional hit knocking into my armor and causing me a little damage. I'd need to keep my cool if I was going to defeat this monster. <gasps> Wait, that's it. I blasted the reaver with my ice blast. While the icy attack didn't freeze it completely, it did slow down the beast's attacks. I could dodge out of the way of its fist a lot easier now and got around behind it to deliver the final strike with my sword. The reaver fell. I had not only survived, but I'd beaten the creature too. But my trusty iron sword was looking a little worse for wear now. Although, much to my surprise, the reaver dropped something that could come in real handy later on, some mystical diamonds. I'll stash these in my inventory for now, but they could make me a great replacement for my sword. As soon as I touched them, I was granted a magical vision by the mystical diamonds. They showed me a little dragon, just newly hatched. It was Ivan, as a baby. He was scared and all alone, left abandoned on the top of a frozen peak. So that's why he was such a bully. He'd felt so helpless, and now he wanted to be the strongest around to avoid that feeling, even if it meant being mean to others. 
From day 54 to day 57, I continued my search through the frozen peaks until I finally came upon the creature I'd been searching for, the Silver Lobo. This thing was nasty. I didn't even have a chance to negotiate or come up with a peaceful solution. It just lunged straight for me. Lucky for me, I had already tangled with a reaver and survived, not to mention all the dread thralls I'd taken down. So with a few blasts of wither skulls, the battle was over as quick as it began. And then I saw the thing that was so handy that the behemoth had sent me here in the first place. The Silver Lobo dropped a map. It had been tasked with guarding a location that obviously Ivan didn't want me getting to. So I grabbed the map and made the trek back to my base. I needed to speak with the behemoth. Say, behemoth, why send me after this map? Will I find out why Ivan wants to stop me from getting stronger? From day 58 to day 62, I decided to do some more work on my base now that I was back for a while. I upgraded our sheep pen, making it more spacious for the flock so they could roam around a bit easier. Then I took a look at the map I had gotten from the Silver Lobo and started to follow it to see what all the fuss was about. It only led to a mine filled with diamonds. No wonder Ivan didn't want me finding out about this place. I got to work mining as many diamonds as I could carry and race back to my base so I could turn them into useful items. Before long, I had a brand new diamond sword to replace my worn out old iron one, along with a new diamond pickaxe to make mining a breeze. Then, just as I was finished, my Cyclops friend came up to talk to me. Sure, even though the cold never bothered me anyway, I'm glad you guys can keep warm. The Cyclops and his new pals had even built a whole new comfy living area for everyone to show their appreciation for being allowed to stay in the base. I had to admit, I was pretty impressed with what they'd done with the place. From day 63 to day 66, I decided to ask around my base for some advice. I knew I still wasn't tough enough to go head to head with Ivan yet, but I had to do something to get back at him. And besides, the Dodo Hippogriff had made me realize that teamwork was the best way to putting a stop to Ivan's plans. Eventually, the best advice came from Kitty. Good idea, a recon mission. Thanks, Kitty. I made my way to the eroded Badlands, making sure I kept to the shade as often as I could since the Badlands were so much hotter than the frozen lakes. Even though ice witherstorms like me were pure enchanted ice, I didn't want to run the risk of melting. I was able to get a good look at Ivan's base. It was well guarded by plenty of his minions. The place was crawling with dread thralls. Getting inside was going to be tricky unless I got a lot stronger. Suddenly, I caught the sound of someone sneaking up on me. It was a siren. Oh no, I thought. One of Ivan's perimeter guards had found me. But to my surprise, she wasn't with Ivan at all. From day 67 to day 70, I followed the siren as she explained what the problem was. No problem, Miss Siren. I'll handle it. Sure enough, there in a clearing sat the vicious Dread Beast. It immediately sensed the presence of an ice witherstorm in its territory, and I got ready for a fight. After all, I'd been looking for a chance to test out my new diamond sword. The snarling Dread Beast was quick, but only a little bit harder to defeat than one of the Dread Thralls. I swung my sword at the monster, and it fell, bested in combat, and now the Siren's home was free from the nasty intruder. Wow, thanks, Miss Siren. 
From day 71 to day 74, I ventured out across the eroded badlands, trying to get a better feel for the area and see if I could come across any hidden passageways or other areas that could offer me some secret way into Ivan's lair. I just needed to find something to give myself an advantage, and if I could get a drop on that egotistical ice dragon, maybe that would help me defeat him. I didn't find much in the way of secret tunnels, although I did pass a strange rock formation. When I looked at it from a certain angle, it almost seemed to spell out a word. If you're enjoying this video and want to see more, then find our other ones by searching Zio Zio or clicking the channel icon below. Suddenly, I heard a familiar flapping of some fearsome wings. Ivan! I must have wandered close enough to his base for one of his dread thralls to spot me. Ivan fired his icy attacks at me. Under the sun of the Badlands, he was weakened. Either that, or because I was stronger now, I could take more of what he could dish out. Feeling confident, I swiped my diamond sword at him as he swooped down low, but it wasn't enough to cause any lasting damage. I still wasn't strong enough, so I dodged out of the path of Ivan's next ice blast and took cover until he flew off, frustrated he couldn't find me. He wasn't the only one feeling frustrated, though. From day 75 to day 78, I headed back to base and went to sit quietly in my room. I was annoyed that I still couldn't beat Ivan in a fight. I knew all about him now, how he had become the meanest, toughest around so nobody else could harm him, but he still needed taking down. And if I couldn't even manage to do that, then no one else had any hope of stopping him. I wasn't strong enough, and that made me feel like I'd let down the poor Dodo Hippogriff. It's okay, BMF. You can make a nice joke. The BMF showed me around the base, eager for me to see the new battlements he and the others had been working hard to install. There was now a brand new watchtower, offering a great vantage point to spot Ivan or any of his minions coming if they ever tried to attack our base. I had to admit, even in my low mood, it helped to lift my spirits a little, but not as much as what came next. I was honored. I took hold of the Cyclops battle axe and hoisted it high. I could feel its magic coursing through me as I suddenly grew larger. It granted me 100 hearts and even passed on some ancient wisdom to me, how to perform a special attack called a whirlwind attack. From day 79 to day 84, I was feeling pumped for a rematch with Ivan the Ice Dragon, so I made my way back toward the Badlands to take him on with my increased strength and the Cyclops' power at my side. Much to my disappointment, Ivan was nowhere to be seen, probably hiding back in the safety of his base. I did come across a fire ogre, though. This was one mob I really didn't want to let get the better of me. His burning blast of flame could have melted me. But luckily, a huge gust of wind from my whirlwind attack and some ice blasts for good measure quickly snuffed out the fire ogre for good. But before I could celebrate, I got quite the fright when a ghost appeared behind me. Hey, don't sneak up on me like that. Well, I'm sure I could help you look. The ghost and I searched around for a while, and he seemed to be pretty grateful just to have someone to talk to after being on his own for so long. After a little digging, we came across a shiny diamond helmet. This was perfect. Some added protection from attacks would give me an edge against Ivan. From day 85 to day 89, I headed back to my base, only to find a terrifying sight waiting for me. Dread thralls! They were attacking my base. I jumped into action and drew my sword. I let out a blast of my whirlwind attack, sending dread thralls toppling over and flinging them into the air. I cut down two with my diamond sword, then froze another with an ice blast. A heavy strike with my sword, and he was gone. With that, the remaining Dread Thralls ran off, and I rushed after them. I had to make sure they didn't make it back to Ivan. If they led him to where my base was located, he could destroy all of my friends. I wasn't about to let that happen. 
I chased the dread thralls across the frozen lakes until they were pretty far from my base. I almost lost track of them, but thankfully, I passed a pink pixie who pointed me in their direction. From day 90 to day 94, I caught up with the Dread Thralls. They'd ran all the way back to the eroded Badlands. If I didn't act quickly, they'd reveal the location of my friends to Ivan. Then he'd attack. They were approaching Ivan's base when suddenly the Thralls stopped. A hideous creature came out to meet them. It was a Gorgon. After the Dread Thralls left, I ran in to take on the Gorgon alone. I'm right here. The Gorgon gave an angry hiss as I jumped out from my hiding spot and cut down one of the Thralls. I took them out much easier than when I'd first started out, but getting rid of them was only the beginning. The Gorgon attacked. I had to use all the attacks I had learned to fend him off. This was by far my toughest fight yet. From day 95 to day 97, I continued trading blows with the Gorgon. I thought of the Dodo Hippogriff and his wise guidance, and of the Behemoth, Kitty, and the Cyclopses, and all they had done for me. I couldn't let them down. Yeah? Well, if you're anything like your boss, then you're just talking a big game to hide how uncertain you are. And I never met a snake I could trust. A snake? That was it! A cold-blooded reptile. That's why the Gorgon lived out here where it was warm. If I used my frosty powers, I could make him drowsy, slow him down. So that's what I did, firing off as many ice blasts as I could, despite the scorching sunlight. It was working. The Gorgon's attacks got slower, easier to dodge, and I could slash the frozen parts of his body to chip away at his health. Soon, he had been defeated! I'd done it! I'd taken down Ivan's top henchman. The Gorgon even dropped a key that would get me into Ivan's base. Others, the other ice wither storms? With his dying breath, the Gorgon told me that Ivan, after being abandoned on a frosty peak, devoted himself to being the coldest creature around. He had hunted down other ice withers to absorb their freezing powers and make himself stronger. That was why he had been trying to get to me this whole time. I had to stop him, but I'd need to gear up before the final fight. On day 98, I made my way back to my base, hoping to prepare myself for my final showdown against Ivan. It had all been building to this, and I hoped I was ready. First, I spoke to Behemoth. Thanks for that, Behemoth. Then, Kitty. I'll take your word for it, Kitty. And finally, the Cyclops. I just hope that I'm ready to take on Ivan. There to make us stronger. On day 99, I made my way back toward the lair of Ivan the Ice Dragon, passing the Alps on my journey towards the eroded Badlands. When I finally reached my destination, it seemed Ivan hadn't taken the fall of his Gorgon too well. The place was crawling with Dread Thralls. I knew I could handle a group of them, but this was way more than I had ever seen. Uh, what I could really do with is getting help getting past these Dread Thralls. Miss Siren! On day 100, I made my way into the heart of Ivan's lair and came face to face with the frozen dragon himself. No way, Ivan. I'm here to stop you. I understand why you feel the need to be so tough, but it doesn't excuse hurting people.
Let's see about that. We clashed. The fight was on. Ivan was much bigger than me and could fly, so he already had a few advantages I didn't. But I had plenty of my own. I was smaller, faster, and far stronger than when we had last fought. Like before, I kept trying to take some swings of my diamond sword whenever Ivan swooped down low and came in for an attack. This was working for a bit, but Ivan quickly realized what I was doing and began to stay, hovering in the air to evade my sword strikes. Flapping his wings to stay above me, he launched Icy Blast my way, and I had to dodge as quick as I could. But that gave me an idea. Two can play that game, Ivan. I've got the power of ice, and the Cyclops is on my side. Moving quickly, I used my Ice Blast. Then I stayed out of reach and fired some Wither Skulls his way. It worked. One more swipe of my Diamond Sword would finish it. Hey, Ivan, you really need to chill out. Boom! Ivan the Ice Dragon was defeated.